and welcome to the Linkcast. This is the Giant Bomb Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of June 29th. I'm your host, Self-Confessed Cynic, and joining me today is Noob Arama. I am joining Self-Confessed Cynic today. And Durin. I am also here. And Tarkeen. Ditto. Oh, for fuck. No energy. <laughs> this, no is, this is This is great. <laughs> Fantastic. We've got exciting oh. news, and this is the oh, what we're coming into That's it with. Right. This is going to be fantastic. A great episode. I got the boil out. on my foot removed, and I just needed it. No, and I'm not asking help. you about your stuff today. This, oh, this week. damn it. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I'm not, I don't care. I don't care because we have more important things to talk about, so we are skipping the 20-minute long bullshit banter we do every week and jumping straight into the news. I'd get Noob to read it out for us. If you can do your BBC voice, that would be fantastic. But, uh, yeah, start. BBC uh, voice. BBC Voice. Yeah, BBC Voice, what you did last week. And and I and I read the news. Yeah, and you read the news. Whoa. That's the only um, reason you, you Are you sure the podcast. BBC Voice isn't isn't copyrighted? Like we just can't start. get sued just for start. Doing voice. Just start the thing. In this week's news, Guild Wars 2 will be releasing on 28th of August 2012. ArenaNet have announced a release date for the internationally anticipated MMO RPG to the cheers and tears of rabid fans. They shocked their captive audience by aiming for a day much earlier than signs perhaps indicated, being only two months from the June 28th announcement. I don't know about you, but, oh, dude, this is really cheesy. I love it. (laughs) But this reporter is very excited. The good news does not stop there, however, as Mike O'Brien, founder and president of ArenaNet, also announced that the final beta weekend will be held from July 20th the 22nd with the quote now that we're two months away from launch we'll spend our remaining time optimizing polishing and balancing the game to ensure that we provide you with the best launch day experience we possibly can you almost had that noob but unfortunately you pronounced it beta not beta (sighs) anyway this is the reason we're skipping holy 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 crap (laughs) <laughs> holy crap. Guys, guys, holy crap. There's a, there is a beta weekend event next month. That's ridiculous. That's and holy true. crap, the month after that, it's released. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? And if you missed out, um, and yeah, you probably heard it would because I didn't put it on the iTunes or the RSS intentionally because it was a pretty much a shit show. But it was, uh, I think it was eight minutes after this announcement. Um, we got onto Skype and then just recorded an impromptu podcast which is on the giant. We were forums. yelling. Noob, yeah, you want to tell us, let's repeat for us how you found out about the release right. announcement. So, so I was on Facebook updating my status about how uneventful and depressing my summer had been, and then when suddenly it's like a few seconds ago, Guild Wars Two. Um, what the hell was the quote? You said you're what ready. Are you ready? Video? Isn't it? Yeah. Are you ready? That's a question mark. And they linked a YouTube video, and it was like a few seconds ago. I'm like. What could this be? And it's like a one-minute video, and, and I was assuming that it probably was something completely irrelevant. It was like, it might be a release date, but I don't know. So I immediately skipped to the end of the video, and it's like <laughs> 28, 8, 12. And I'm like, holy shit, holy shit. And then so the first thing I do is um, I message Cynic saying, and I, I, was kept, I kept on yelling because he was playing a game. What were you playing? I was playing Days X. And, right. I, and I, 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 was, I was, I was just finishing up because I, I was playing Deus Ex: Human Revolution for the first. I've been playing it for the first time, and um, I just hear this beep, 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 like constantly. I'm like, okay, fine. And it's like stop playing, close the game down, alt tab, and it's noob. And the the only statement is, "Give us two release date announced." YouTube link. <laughs> um, and I'm just like, what? And it's, so I click on it, and I, I unlike noob, have some patience. So I watched the YouTube link, and it's like this long build-up with like this um, this clips to the it's beat. Like this epic of video. this awesome yeah. like video of like dude salute, like a like modern warfare three trailer. Did you guys see the? And- did you guys see the thread or see the uh, link in one of the threads? Uh, oh right yeah, on, that was amazing. That uh, uh, they they did the the YouTube like side by side things <laughs> where they had that video, and then they had a clip from Giant Bomb uh, from the Bombcast. Uh, where they were talking about what they expected out of the next Call of Duty trailer, where they were just like <laughs> timing the bah, cut, <laughs> bah, and just how how perfectly that fit up with it that trailer. Perfectly. Oh, I, I, yeah. no, Absolutely perfectly, that. yeah. That is fantastic. I, I, yeah, I catch <laughs> it. it was amazing I have to catch it. But um, yeah, so I, I I get to the end and I immediately 
But my immediate response after I get to the uh, date announcement what, was it the twenty eighth of the eighth twelve or did it say eight twenty eight twelve? Eight twenty eight. I, it was, I believe it said eight twenty eight. It was the American way. It's American yeah. time. Yeah, fucking damn straight. Ladies. Um, which is fair. So the, the, the I alt tab to uh, what was it? It was Steam chat, and the only thing I wrote was, "Do you have some form of voice comms?" <laughs> <laughs> we just jump onto the rounds and just start yeah. screaming at one another. Um, and then immediately after that, I, I was like, get on Skype, we're recording a podcast. And he was like, fine, we get on Skype, and then you can listen to the rest uh, yeah. on the Giant Bomb forums. We, we posted a YouTube link on there, and you can hear about 15 minutes of us talking uh, excitedly but sensibly about Guild Wars 2, and then about 45 minutes after that of us like coming down off the high and just, like, we barely, completely just call completely speechless. Parking and- while he's sleeping. <laughs> And well, it was like I two hours later, I messaged Noob, like, holy shit, they released a release. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks yeah. for killing the high. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you actually find out two hours later? It was whenever yeah, I, your it, story, it was whenever I messaged give, give us a, um, a lay down of how you found out. I, I saw it from an email they sent out, actually. Um, oh, they, I didn't they, they get one. The release date. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they totally sent out an email with the, with the YouTube video in there and everything, so... Like I still saw that same YouTube video, but mine obviously was a, a bit later than your guys' was. <laughs> right. I'm not sure exactly how much later it was, but I'm happy we got one out. I'm pretty sure we were pretty much the first, if not the only, until now, um, least day reactions podcast that went up for Guild Wars. I, I looked through iTunes just today because even. Well, why like, why didn't you put it up everywhere and then everyone would have seen it and we'd become because we're doing this show like a real show about it where we're not just <gasps> screaming into the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> That's and calling enough. people in the middle of the night. That's that's what people want. <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. They they want encapsulated excitement. Well, if you want to encapsulate the excitement, it's there. It's um, it's on the ground. <laughs> it, it is like fresh excitement. <laughs> that or you know, ch- check back oh, release day. Yes, yeah, so now we're all like again. calm and collected about it. We were not calm and collected for yeah. that podcast. <laughs> um, I think I was all tears. my legs were shaking. <laughs> <laughs> like it was complete adrenaline. I think that I have a problem with Guild Wars. Yeah, so to get to the first discussion topic, uh, since we are leaving most of the shit out this week and jumping straight into this, um, so what was everyone's reactions to the release date? I can, I, I just like, if you can boil it down to a statement, mine would be uh, overjoyed and a bit surprised. I think I originally, I, I'm pretty well quoted as um, saying that I thought it would come out in November. Uh, That's because you're an idiot, though. I had complete skeptic- skepticism in the its ability to get the game fucking out the door. Um <laughs> But right. now, yeah, hearing just Wait. two months from Thursday, I think it was my time. I, 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 was... I believe, I want to say that I had said, and I guess I would have to go back and check the tapes on this one, but I believe I had said that it was going to be late it. August, early September. I, I think you so, nailed like, it. Yeah. You did. When, yeah. when I saw I that like email, I on that. when I saw that email, um, I was sitting here in, in my basement, it was just me and my two-year-old son, and I saw the email, pulled up, and I saw, see the release date on there, and I, I'm not even kidding, just out loud, I'm just like, I fucking knew it. <laughs> 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 yeah i'm pretty sure you nailed it I luckily he didn't pick that one up taste, so yeah yeah that's and, and <laughs> again his age. it's not like anyone could call you on it i'm pretty sure it's yeah you, you, that was it and you, we have it on audio on a podcast well i had it pretty close i said i said um after july but before august yeah that, so that, the first hour <laughs> july <laughs> um <laughs> No, but yeah, no, like, I, like honestly, even 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 as as recent as like two weeks ago when we had talked about it when I was on here last, um, we were, we even had talked a little bit about when we thought it would be releasing. Um, yeah. I, I was still saying that it was probably going to be late August, early September. But mm-hmm. even while I was saying that, like I, I was kind of thinking after the fact, like I feel like we're coming on to a point now where if they were going to release it by that time, they would have made an announcement. Yeah. So like exactly. I was almost starting to kind of doubt myself on <laughs> on that release date because they hadn't made an announcement yet. And then we had the stress test and yeah. and we'll probably get into that a bit more later, but like after the stress test I was like a lot of people like this is done. Like there <laughs> there were there are clearly some things in there that needed fixed a little bit. The uh the player story stuff still wasn't working as well as it should have been or, or as well yeah. as it had in in the first beta weekend. Um but all in all like the the content that I saw there like this is Easily the most optimized I'd seen the game, and I, I you know, kind of came out of that. Granted, I didn't get to play a lot of it, but I came out of that kind of thinking, like, okay, this game isn't as far off as everyone thinks it is. Yeah, exactly. Right. I, I would say that uh, during the stress test, uh, it got to the point where we stopped wanting to do stuff because we're like, D- D- I, I, not only have a lot of the stuff we've done before, but it's gotten to the point where I, I just want this game to release. I'm just over. I'm just done. 
I, yeah, I, I actually, want- I actually spent most of the stress test just standing in one place, not doing anything, just because like I wanted to be logged in the game, but I was afraid to actually continue playing more of it because I, like you said, like I felt like this is this is done. This is how I'm going to see it later on, and I don't want to burn yeah. myself on it already. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to burn yourself out, and. That's strange. Just, I got too much accomplished during that stress test. I probably accomplished more in that stress test than I did in the last week in beta. <laughs> and we'll get into that. It, it, it was actually a really great uh, stress test for. Yeah, I really enjoyed just it. Just in general. Uh, yeah, it was um, surprising that you don't think you can do much in four hours, but a lot of like, stuff can happen in four hours. Because the last stress test for me was blue screens and 30 minutes of mm, gameplay. Yeah. And this is a major change in that. Right. Uh, so they they clearly through. listened to me. You know, they listened to <laughs> what I say. And they're rolling back all the changes I don't like, and they're fixing they, the game for they, me. They didn't. Wait, I think you're. Weren't you the one that <laughs> sent in the bug report? This is too fun. Oh no, no that, that was Rawson. That was Rawson. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. couldn't make it to today's episode. Um, Tarkin, just just to move us on to the next topic. But um, you, you first. What was your? If you could put it, bottle it down to a couple of statements, what was your reaction to the uh, release date? Overwhelmed <laughs> with <laughs> joy and tears. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you were tearing up during the podcast. I, I yes, didn't I expect was. that reaction from anyone. I, I think that was a bit extreme. I thought you were making it up at the time, but yeah, no, it's um, I I don't really get emotional about games. Uh, excitement was definitely what? there when I heard. And Tarkin, you 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 played the original Guild Wars, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, see, that's the thing. Like, how long has it been since that game? Like, this oh, has been a game me. long in the making, even if the actual development time maybe. That's the thing. Long. Like, we, me, Tarkin. He started about what two months before I ever played Guild Wars, or was it three, something like that? It was about, um, t- and that, two months that was on release date, wasn't? It? Or pretty much very close no, to release was, date. That was about Guild Wars. three months after it came out. Okay, so okay, what we were talking that? about what two thousand five, two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that would be this like his reaction would probably be real similar to if you know Blizzard would have, would have come out and and announced WoW two this year. Like yeah. my my reaction to that because I've been playing WoW since about two thousand four two thousand five like it would have been probably very similar like you just have a real close uh, like that, that's you it because right? we were in high school yeah. that was that's like the, our formative years were spent yeah. playing Guild Wars like there's Guild a Wars. reason we're doing a motherfucking Guild Wars two podcast <laughs> every week it's because we were really passionate about it because of like the intimate or well, if you will excuse my usage of the word times we spent with that game like. Yeah, like I, I think high school, the last two years of high school were girls, school, and video games. And that video game was Guild Wars 1 for us. Um, I guess that dates a lot of the people. Like, I'm sorry if I'm making one out there if you're old. The but, only uh, reason why it was Guild Wars was because we were too poor for WoW. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I legitimately, at the, at the time, and even now, having played a Again, only a couple of hours were out, but enough to know that I didn't like it. I, I, I'd say I probably wouldn't stick stuck with the original Gear Wars, if comparing those two. Um, but I don't know, it's definitely that was that got into it. Like There was a reason we got into um, MMOs to begin with before we actually fell in love with the game. Like started playing because well, it was only like $45 or $60 Australian. Yeah, it was $60 and Australian. Yeah, it was a str- like it's normally back then games were one hundred and ten to one hundred dollars um, usually, so it was a cheap game with like a lot of hours capable of playing it because then Mo it was a massive on- cooperative game, I guess you want to call it. Um, but it, yeah, it was it was formative. I, I'd, I'd boil it down to that one word, and Guild Wars Two is really important. At least yeah, to yeah, guys and I mean for. And yeah, exactly. And for this game to have been in development for as long as it has, and yeah. you know, a lot of people have started to question over the last probably what year and a half, two years, whether it was even going to come out at all. Exactly. Uh, it was, I, I, I know it at one point, so like close to vaporware. Yeah, at one point, yeah, exactly. At one point, like a lot of people were were really seeing it as vaporware, and so to finally see an actual release date tag to it, like I totally understand that. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Like the, I don't think anyone out there remembers too well now because it is months later. And the first episodes of Lincoln Cast only happened once the beta started. But before the first beta weekend event, it was really dark times for, for anyone involved in Guild Wars 2. Like, for example, at that time, the Guild Cast hadn't really um, started. It was going through a hiatus. Um, just the, the talk out there for Guild Wars 2 was, was this game coming out? They haven't been at E3. They, they weren't really a too big a presence at Gamescom. They, they showed the Necromancer, but nothing too much new. Um, yeah, a lot, it, of people it, were, a lot of people seem to be thinking that, like, the arena net was basically just trying to take people's money and that there was, there was no game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it was really 
it wasn't scary, but it it, it was. Uh, let's just say when they announced the first beta weekend events, that was the time. That's when Guild Wars Two started becoming a thing. Um, well, it was even before that. I, it, it was really whenever they first started doing the the press weekends, and you finally started seeing right. videos of gameplay being done by people. Yeah, actually exactly. coming out that they're like, okay, this this has to be a game because I mean, I, I watched Total Biscuit play it, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm exactly. pretty sure and this is th- this is something. And not only was it a, finally a game, but it was pretty much universally praised. Yeah, and e- everyone and I, 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 we can attest this now that we've played it. It's a fucking good game, um, to the point it's where the best a lot of game people ever. out there, a lot of people out there are actually questioning whether it could even be as good as the hype is making it. Because I think a lot of I think, I think a couple of people have been disappointed. Obviously, some people are saying that Guild Wars Two is like the second coming. <clears throat> Guys like me in Turkey and. Uh, maybe like us in terms of background, more like noob in terms of actual mentality. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 a lot of people are calling it the second coming. It's not. It's it's, it's still just a, a no, video like it, game. Like, no, like, it is the here. second like, coming. What are you saying? It's, it's not always not the second coming. It's also not the second wow. Like this game yeah. is not going to eclipse, eclipse wow by any no, stretch. It can't. It can't. But like, it, Unless the internet fails no, it's gonna somehow, create its, it will be It's going to be the first Guild Wars 2. That's exactly what it will be. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's the best way of putting it possible. That is um, quite possibly the, the most intelligent thing you've said on this podcast, Noob. Thank <laughs> <Ever>. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's a thing. And so when Tarkin had that reaction when we were doing that spoiler cast, not, not spoiler, reactions cast, um, I was sitting there going, and it, it was literally just us sitting around and just being... It's kind of almost solemn towards half of it. I, I, I think I, I haven't listened back to it because it's pretty surreal listening to myself on, on the on the internet. But um, I'm pretty sure for like, after about 15 minutes, we just it just goes quiet and everyone's just sitting there, and just just staring at their monitors. And uh, elation could be one word, but aside from that, I guess in general, uh, reactions are positive for this release date. Let's just say and leave it there. Um, but to get into the actual cons- uh, discussion involving it. I have a couple of things lined up because again, this is this is going to be a special podcast. I don't think we're going to be too much doing too much in terms of um talking about stress tests. We'll try we'll try to do that towards the end of the episode. I think especially noob has a bunch of things to talk about but, um, before we. Yeah, get there, I do. <laughs> um, I, the first thing I want to, want to talk about is because there's two distinct essentially sides to this today's discussion. It would be one talking about the release date, and we do have a couple of things. It's not just going to be us saying, "Oh my God, it's releasing." We actually have probably some things to discuss before we do that. And secondly, the um, next Beta Weekend event. And I, mean, I definitely want to ask your opinions on some things involving that. So stay in. It won't just be us going, oh my god, release date, and talking about our past with yours one. Um, so the first discussion topic is, uh, what are you guys' impressions about it releasing so soon? And what I mean by that is, um, in a lot of ways especially from the last Beta Weekend events. And I, I definitely agree with everyone saying that it did feel finished to some extent, but um, it was a case where there were still a bunch of things not finished in the game. There, there was, uh, like, cutscenes weren't working, that kind of stuff. Um, especially some elements of it that we weren't particularly too ha- happy about and that kind of stuff. And I, I want to discuss that a little bit more later. But aside from that, um, and we've already said how surprised we were, but what what what's your actual impression of releasing so soon? What, what do you think they're rushing towards this date? Do you think they're um th- that they picked a fant- a good time for it? Like, what do you guys think, Duran? Um, well, having already like kind of guessed this date ahead of time, like I wasn't too terribly surprised to see it. Um, I guess I was a, li- a little surprised just because it was like like I said before, like after I had the last time I had said that it was going to be around this time was two weeks ago, and kind of shortly after the recording of that. I started yeah. to kind of question it because they hadn't they hadn't announced anything yet. Um, yeah. So to to announce it and have have the release date be two months out is a little surprising. But I I mean I feel like they you basically think ha- they'd they, actually be able to get the marketing like around. It I don't think they need it. it for the two weeks. The two I don't weeks? think I don't, I don't think they need it, like to to rally some marketing behind this thing because there's already like the word of mouth that has has followed the um, even just you know only as far back as even the first beta weekend like everybody just knows about Guild Wars too. Yeah, and, and I think it comes back to what I was saying before. It's gotten to the point where um, there's just so much word of mouth about this thing that it's gotten to the point where some people are even like over it. Some people are already going, "Oh yeah, that right. game was well, too." To some extent, yeah. But I think they were they were smart about like 
again, again, go back to what we were talking about earlier, where they kind of went on this, uh, they kind of went dark for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, they weren't showing up at trade shows. They weren't putting out videos, you know, developer diaries, things like that. And I think that was actually kind of smart of them to some extent, yeah. at least. Uh, I think maybe they did it a little bit too long. And so they got people <laughs> worried. Um, but more so, they didn't oversaturate uh, the internet with Guild Wars 2. Exactly. And also, when we were talking last week, we were all saying that maybe we can take one or two more beta weekend events or any more. But beyond that, it probably start negatively impacting the game because of this continual getting hyped, you know, then then the hype dying down, getting hyped. Yeah, exactly. Like, down. I feel like they've, they've handled the balance of that really well with this game. Yeah. I mean, some people are saying that the game is overhyped, but it's not being done so by ArenaNet. That's, that's by the players themselves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> are enjoying this game so much and the, the small bits of time they have with it that they're just gushing all over the internet about how amazing the game is I don't and for think people there's who even been a tv spot yet has there been a tv spot i, I don't i don't believe so no at least not that i've seen yeah when you get out and watch tv so um yeah, and i guess like a lot of people just caught in the echo chamber and are seeing a lot of yes exactly players going on about people like Guild Wars 2 that they are getting a bit um they're getting oversaturated but i think the actual market like overall world of things Guild Wars 2 is about the right level of anticipation and um hype I, I'd yeah say. absolutely well and, and again because they went dark for so long like this game has been in development for a very 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 long time but the hype train really didn't start until i would say probably about the time those press videos first started coming out so like yeah. within the, easily within the last year Guild Wars 2 hasn't been in development that long compared to other triple a games most triple a games are around five years development the problem was that what's, Arena what's announced it it's, as it's soon at, as they started. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. That's yeah, totally. <laughs> but they kind of had to; they were forced to because at the time they'd um, been hinting at an expansion to the original Guild Wars that they wanted to start working on. Mm-hmm. Guild Wars memory. Utopia. Yeah, and and they had to pretty much say that they weren't going to keep. Working yeah, exactly. On that like and if you're going to stop, yeah, if you're going to stop releasing expansions for your current game, you have to give people a reason why. Exactly. Otherwise, and, other, and, otherwise they're just going to leave. They had to say, "Hey, that, that we were working on Guild Wars 2. and I, I guess, yeah, that the obvious blowback from that is that they've been saying they've been working on it for quite a few years now. It was, yeah. What was that? Two thousand eight, two thousand nine. No, two thousand seven was when they first released it, or first like said, "Oh, we're working on Guild Wars 2. Yeah, so cool. about five years, right? Five years. Yeah, which, so yeah, which that's, is that's about not bad at all. That's, that's about the average time they went to StarCraft two. That's last time. But apparently, development Game. began yeah, right after Nightfall or Factions. I want to say Factions." <laughs> Mm-hmm. That, completely that, not yeah. sure. It wasn't Nightfall what they were said it. But, yeah, but basically, they like, said factions. yeah, but, but basically, like, I, I, like I said, I kind of expected this release date. Um, even you know, even as far mm-hmm. back as the first time that we talked about it. Um, but I, as for your your questions about like you know, did it feel like it was ready or things like that? Like I. It does because the other thing you have to remember too is that because they are going with a free to play model. They can technically release this game, quote unquote, unfinished, yeah, and, and kind of add those things in after the fact because people aren't having don't feel yeah, like I they're guess. wasting their money paying month after month after month without having some of this content. Exactly, like we've already like only be having access to level thirty five content or so. I think all of us here, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about Duran because he has some scheduling problems, but I think most of us here have played over sixty hours of the game already. Um, yeah, I'm at around 70 now, new, but you'd be around the same, wouldn't you? Even more. Uh, even. I might be a little bit more. Yeah, and, and Tarkin played with me, so we'd be around the same as well. And that's Actually, I'd be straight probably about more than new. Because I've been to <laughs> every Beta Weekend event and every stress no, test. No, no, every stress no, test as well. No, I'm longer. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I probably, probably... I missed the, yeah, I missed the second stress test. I've, I've probably done the like one. 50 or so, so pretty Yeah, and this is just from our investment of, well, for me, it was... A beta. A weekend beta. Or so. um, and, and that I've already gotten my money's worth from this game many times over, and it's not even out yet, and I haven't even been able to access higher-level content yet, so... Yeah, I've already played more of this game than I have most games I bought. Yeah, yeah. Like, straight up. Definitely. I, I can look through my, my catalog of games, and most games are, if you get generally get done with about 50... No, sorry, 10 to 50 hours, depending on the type of game. Like, yeah, like, I'm already halfway... I, I've already put about as many hours into this as... About, half as many hours into this as I probably put in the entirety of Star, or Star Wars The Old Republic um, from the time it launched <laughs> to when I canceled it. So... Yeah, and, and I just want more. 
Um, yep. And of course, we're a bit of skewed perspective because and, we and we're only we so much that, so far into the game. Like, there's so yeah. much more to do. Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd very much so. Yeah, and but one thing. So um, I don't, this is slightly unrelated, but in in terms of saying there's so much more to do, um, you know how it says like what percentage of the map you've explored when you open up the map mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that percentage the overall of the entirety of Guild Wars 2 or just the beta? Guild I believe Wars it was 2? just the beta, beta, beta Guild Wars 2 because I think okay. until recently, like we just now finally are able to see um, a full map of the world. Um, oh, yeah. Some you should actually people discuss done. that, huh? We have Except discussed that on this podcast. What the beta allows you to access is far less than what the map says right. there is. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. Like the, the map completion that Noob's talking about, that number that he sees is likely just what's actually in the beta. It's not a percent of the total. So I got 20% by the end of the beta. Yeah, so I think that was 20% of beta content, not of the actual entire world of Guild Wars 2. I've added that to the show notes. We'll, t- we'll, we'll touch on that in a bit. Um, so my next topic, uh, regarding the release date, would be... Yeah, it's it's fantastic they're releasing two months, and I, I think we're all pretty happy with it, especially from playing the stress test. We can say it's relatively almost finished. But... um. I think. What, what do you guys think of the strategic implement, uh, the strategic elements of, re, yeah, of reaching that release date? Because I, I, I looked it up and did some shock re- research on this topic to look at what else is coming out around then, and it's actually. So I told you to do it. Pretty much a golden <laughs> time to come out because right, if you look at it, then one week before Dark Shadows Two comes out, which is fine. It's not really in the same market, even though. What's Dark Shadows like, Two? Dark Shadows Two. Oh, I don't know oh, what that, that is. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, God damn it. That, it's a really good game. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it. But I'm going to finish it before it goes to you and comes out. Oh, Darksiders. Okay. Darksiders, yeah. Um, that's coming out the week before. Dark Souls is coming the day of. But that's, again, not on really PC. the same market. Yep. In, on PC, obviously, it's come out for ages ago on consoles. And Darksiders is more of a console game. I think more people play that on console than the new PC. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then there's nothing else the week of. Borderlands 2 is coming out a month later. Right, and Miss Pand- Mr. Pandaria doesn't even have a release date yet that I know of. <laughs> yeah. Like so uh, in is... terms of it, well, in terms of the the MMO market, I mean, Secret World is releasing next week, and then like you said, the ne- basically the next big MMO you have is the Mr. Pandaria beta or beta, yeah, Mr. Pandaria, um, and that doesn't have a release date. It'll, li- when... it'll likely be probably October to November. What happens when Blizzard one ups Guild Wars two and releases it the day of they announce it in July? I will say um, the Mr. Pandaria beta is already uh, testing dungeon content, so it's possible that they could end up um, pushing that game out by August or September. I would be surprised if it came out before Guild Wars 2, though. I think that they would be hurting themselves trying to get out before that, so they're, they're probably going to release it like September and hope that they can just leech people back from Guild Wars 2. Which they will do. Like to be honest, they they, they that to, will to some extent they will. But again, like the, that's where that's where Guild Wars Two's strength is is in its no sub. So yeah, they may leash people back for a little bit, but, but people are free to play when, both at the same time. Yeah, and yeah. when people go through that content and realize that it's, I mean, I've, I've played some of it. It's it's it's. I don't mean to blow your mind here, but it's World of Warcraft. Oh wow, really? You sure? Is it said in pandas, the world of Azeroth? But it's World of Warcraft. <laughs> Well, it that is, is a actually big modifiers with wow. pandas. <laughs> it is with pandas, and there are dragons. Well, you um, can just but, play Warcraft three, and there you go. There's yeah, pandas yeah. too. But yeah, so I mean, like some people so you obviously can't will be a brewmaster. That that's confirmed. You can, right? you, you can, can. be a panda. It, it brewmaster. is a it is a spec of the uh, it is a tanking spec of the monk. Oh, that's fucking awesome! <laughs> yeah, uh, and you can you can throw kegs of beer. Ryan yeah, Davis's yeah. excitement over that class is the only reason I'm even remotely interested. <laughs> and, and and that's not to like diminish like the awesomeness that actually is in that expansion. They're doing some really cool things with that. And I don't I don't want to go too in depth because this isn't a WoW podcast. Uh, but they are doing some really cool things with that. But a lot of WoW players will um, kind of go in, devour that content, and a few months later be done with it. And then where do they go from there? They're going to go back to Guild Wars Two because there's not a sub for that, and they can play both of them simultaneously. So like they may leech people off of Guild Wars Two. But really, like in terms of keeping them from playing that game, it's not really going to happen. Yeah, and and again, they don't even have releases now. This is all assuming that they're going to come out in around the same time, maybe September. Um, I, at the moment, Guild Wars Two is releasing it in like a real dearth of games, and it's really surprising that they they aimed and got that date. It's a fantastic date for them, I think. Um, mm-hmm. 
I, I, I can see myself pretty much only playing that and maybe Assassin's Creed 3 for the rest of the year. Well, and the, the really important the really important thing about the about them choosing that date is they're really kind of they, they, they picked a really good time because it, it's right before kind of the big gaming season really starts. Yeah, right. I mean, obviously, obviously, it really, really hits in November, um, but September on is where it really starts to kind of pick up um, pick up pace. And so, for them yeah. to release ju- just right before that, kind of on the tail end of the summer drought of gaming, is just like you said, it's a, it's Probably the best time they could have picked. Yeah, pretty much the best time. Like obviously, for those out there who want shout outs to their favorite game, Dishonored, I don't believe has a release date yet, but it's coming out towards the end of the year. I'm definitely going to play that as well. And there's a couple other games out there that I've never that look really interesting. But for in terms of games that actually have set release dates, Guild Wars Two is pretty much the best set out to sell the most that I can see in the foreseeable future, which is exciting to me as someone who but wants that game to succeed. They were smart to release before Borderlands Two, though. I'm gonna play that game. I'm gonna play that game, but maybe for I don't really like the you know the only other game they, they, they might have a, a potential um, Arma uh, three. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, only, the only game that, that there might be you know a potential overlap in in both fan base and uh, release dates is Torchlight two. Ooh, that, when's that, that coming? Does, out? It, it doesn't still have an official release date yet, right. at least not, not as far as I've seen. But it is dated as summer 2012. Okay. So, I mean, so August 28th is about as late summer as you can get. Damn. So, I mean, it's possible, and, and given they haven't given it a, an actual date, it's possible that that could release around that same time as well. So Yeah. I, 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 honestly, if I had to choose between the two, I'd still probably pick Guild Wars. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. But, 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 but there are people... 60 hours of Diablo 3 by now. But, uh, but, but there are people that, you know, if, if they have to choose between Guild Wars 2 or Torchlight 2, some people choosing between $60 and yeah, $20. Yeah, for some people that would be a choice. And yeah. like for us, a lot of us, it wouldn't be. But I, I guess it's definitely a case where the audiences definitely do overlap. They're PC games. And as you said, $20 is a really good value for that game. Like, mm-hmm. Even though yeah, I'm not going to play it. It's a really I great game. The say, original is really good. Yeah, Torchlight is going to be yeah. an awesome game. Um, I'm Yeah. That, but I'm, I hope it fails so Guild Wars succeeds. <laughs> and Torchlight could be actually be a better <laughs> game because they're they're kind of seeing the failures of uh, Blizzard with Diablo 3. Yeah. And like they're actively seeing this stuff and saying, like, oh, that I wouldn't have done it that way. I wouldn't have done that that way. Yeah, um, like I actually have been following one of the uh, one of the Torchlight devs on uh, Twitch. He streams occasionally, and so he's he's kind of I heard off comments here and there about it. Uh, him kind of discussing his opinions on Diablo three, and I think that he's they're they're definitely taking that stuff into consideration with Torchlight too. So that's that's always good. Agreed. But anyway, no, Guild Wars two podcast. Yeah, I, I may <laughs> eventually play Torchlight three, but I'm going to be playing Guild Wars two for. Ever. <laughs> no, that's not, <laughs> that's not true. But I'm, I'm going to play it a lot. I, it's going to take up all, pretty much all my free time unless I like step out for a couple of days here and there to play other releases. Um, so that's 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 really date. Turkey, do you have anything to chime in there? Are you happy about the release not date? When really. what's it? You know, you, when is the release date in relation to what you've got to do? Because I, I think I've got um, nothing unless I get a job, which I should hopefully by then. I pretty much have not, nothing else to do because I finished uni. Um, tar- you, that's a couple of days before you start semester, right, Tarkin? No, it's like a month in, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. So it's just just in the right spot to fuck up your midterms. Yes, it is. It, it, <laughs> just before the census state. That's, oh, that's about a month in, so yeah. When, when does summer holidays end? Uh, I, I don't live in America, so I have no idea. But for you guys, what, what, what kind of date are we looking at? Is this a good spot for summer holidays, Durian? No, no. It's I, I believe I believe school is already in. That's what I'm talking, noob. It's right before school starts. Oh, is it? A uh, good week before. Ooh. I guess a week. Like the 25th would give me a bit more time time because that's when you pre-orders can p- start oh, playing. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. We, we actually haven't said um, that yet. Um, obviously, for guys who pre purchased this game, so pretty much most of the guys listen to this podcast and us ourselves, uh, we obviously get that three day head start. So we get it's coming out on the Tuesday, so twenty eighth of August is the Tuesday, which means we'll be having it from the Saturday before that, I right. believe. Anybody um, who pre purchased so or pre ordered, like you don't have to pre purchase to right. get into that. Yeah, yeah, and wait, well, is all do all pre orders get that? I know Amazon. We can confirm yeah. that Amazon works. If you yeah, want, you Am- well, Amazon that. works. Yeah, Amazon works for the beta weekends as well. But but regardless, when it comes to the Head Start, everybody anybody who has pre ordered or pre purchased gets into the Head Start. That's fantastic. Yeah, and and that's going to be awesome. It's the weekend of, so 
I, I can't wait to. We'll probably do a live stream for anyway. Let's, let's figure all that stuff out later. So it's, it's a good release date. We are happy about the release date. Let's... I mean, it's definitely better than having it released in like September, yeah. the middle of September or something. I, if if it came out in November, which is what I originally I, thought, I would um, mind. I can see because Pandora would most probably be out by then, and I, I can see it definitely being negatively effective. But the fact that they mm. nailed down this per, pretty much perfect release date, I'm pretty happy about. Um, so the next point is probably the last point on this topic. Um, I think a really important one. So thoughts and ruminations is what I've written down here. And what that means is I, I want to relate this to the next uh, beta weekend event at the same time. Um, so the so we've talked about the release date so far. The beta weekend event, which they've also announced alongside the um, the release date, is set for July 20th to 22nd. So that's about, it's really close, like three weeks away, right? Um let me just check my calendar here. One, yeah, two, right. three. Yeah, yeah two, I, I do three. think it was funny that, uh, just real quickly, um, with them announcing the release date and then in that same announcement yeah. announcing the beta weekend event, the beta weekend event announcement actually just got fucking buried. <laughs> and they had to re-announce it through their Twitter to everybody because just no, nobody fucking paid attention to that part of it. Well, it was in like the second last paragraph or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like at that point <laughs> you stopped reading because you were already paragraph. like jumping around your room. <laughs> um yeah no it's 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 really great and wait new do you want to read out that uh quote for us again and their reasoning behind the um the beta weekend event now that we're just two months away from launch we'll spend our remaining time optimizing polishing and balancing the game to ensure that we can provide you with the best launch day experience we possibly can yeah uh, and it really ties into because they did a um Pretty much straight off to the last beta weekend event. We didn't report on it. Um, other sites did. Like for example, the Guildcast reported on it. But um, they did a interview with RPG Gamer or RP Gamer, I guess you could say, if you want to go by the URL, um, which was an interview about uh, what their feedback was from the beta weekend event, what they'll be doing, um, and, and it, it integrates well into my actual discussion topic here. So what they're what it means is, um, they, in that interview and what they're saying in this statement here, they've stated that they've pretty much finished all mechanical changes that they were planning to do. They're only really working on balancing from here on out. And included within that is um, they've stated that they will, are continuing to work on melee and range balancing. I believe they've announced that um, there's going to be a new type. of. You know how um, the big problem with melee at the moment is... Um, it's hard to judge when to dodge when it when the boss like rears up to do his big attack and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. um, and, that, and that's a big reason why melee guys are getting dominated because they're taking too much damage because they're taking those big hits even though they should be able to tell when those are happening and get out of the way of them. So they've they've actually stated that the bosses will have um, distinct modes of combat and visual indicators or some form of indicator which lets you know when they're switching between those modes and what the I interpreted that to mean was that they, for example a boss would go from a series of like attack patterns against range and he'll switch to a series of attack patterns against melee and that kind of stuff and they'll have visual indicators so that's one element of the or he could like yell i'm switching to ranged attack and then he'll use his range attack <laughs> or he can change I'm switching colors. back yeah or change color i'm turning oh, red be- or he, or he takes yeah, exactly. out a he different weapon. You know, he can pull no, that's out what, a different that's weapon. They really need to bring back in games. Like, I would love to see them bring back that, that idea of, like, as the boss is dying, they start flashing red. Oh, and then, yeah. Like, as they get closer and closer to dying, the flashing happens faster and faster. Exactly. And and the attack speed increases and all that crazy stuff to get... Yeah. Like, what yeah, what yeah, if you're epileptic? Crazy. Yeah. What if you're what? Epileptic. Uh, <laughs> I, d- I don't think that's they have, they, have, <laughs> they have warning for that. <laughs> yeah, they have a warning for that. And I Do not look at bosses when the entire you are screen epileptic. flashes or anything like that. I don't they have, they have epileptic most mode. Most, right. uh, most guys We're, who have that issue, I mean, and I do have a couple of friends who have epilepsy, but um, don't really have too big an issue with that kind of stuff in video games. So. Yeah, there, there's yeah. actually a, there's a, a standard that they have to follow when it comes to flashing lights on stuff. They can only have it flash <laughs> so often hazard. per second. Yeah. Um, um, they, they have that warning there in case something happens. But there is actually a standard yeah. that they do to make it's sure. It's not our fault if you die of a seizure. In Guild Wars 1, <laughs> they actually had this thing where um, bosses had a distinct aura for whichever class they had. It, it looked yeah. pretty che- cheesy and it didn't look that great. But if they updated it and then they made a new aura for like, Guild Wars 2, which looked good, and had that actually be the visual indicator when bosses are changing their attack patterns, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't complain. They should like, just even... pull out different weapons. Honestly. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool that'd as well. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, if you could see them, like, but actually that takes go through, time. like, a swap animation or something like that, it'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. But we'll anyway, see. The, 
That's that's one well, thing. I, I, I like about. the idea of I'm using my ranged attack, and then you'll use his ranged. <laughs> so simple, and it tells me what's going on. <laughs> it lets me know when to dodge. And then sometimes, like, no, I think if it got to angry. that point, yeah, I think if it got to that point in uh, MMOs with them like <laughs> providing tells and things like that to that extent, uh, in place of add-ons, I think I'd rather just have add-ons. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, or, so or, you know, th- that's like one thing they've announced, and they- they've said they're um, moving towards like, polishing. They- they've also s- so it brings me to my actual uh, discussion topic was now that we know when it is uh, when it's coming out. Uh, but what-, what are your thoughts in terms of is there? Do you think they've actually taken into account the feedback we've given them over the last couple of beaters? And what, what do-, do you- is there any issues you see in the current game that you're afraid they'll still be there after release for example oh, i have a big one um the right, die system ahead. oh they've they've announced that they're going to keep it be, they've listened to the feedback inverted commas but are keeping it the same and they've said that you can actually they're putting in systems which allow you to craft dies and um get them through the mystic forge so that removes some of the randomness there but i still prefer the old die system well, noob what, what was your point um if you go to dehesa plateau um, in the very top left of the map, so the northwest of the map, right in going into the Norn zone, there is this um, Norn lady who gives out a skill quest. And if you talk to her, if you're the first one to talk to her, so this has happened, so let's say you're, the server resets and you're the first one to talk to her, you'll get the skill quest. But if you're not the first one to talk to her, she just says, the s- snow leopards are really cool or something, and you just don't get it. <laughs> Please fix that. That's a... I cannot 100% that area. I because assume, of that. The, the thing is, right, that... Um, but that, they, that bug has been around since the first beta weekend. Exactly. There's some and I've reported it multiple times. That they... There's some issues that they have in the game that A, should have been fixed by now, and B, I'm not sure that, that because it hasn't been fixed now that they'll actually get it fixed by release. Um, two months is a long time in development terms, especially if you consider them crunching. They're probably going to crunch for this last two months. Um... But this is that's all taking into the fact that we've only seen what it was like nine, ten areas of the game. That's all we've been able to personally beta test, and we've already come with a bunch of these. But do, do you have any points to bring up? Like, is there anything you're afraid that they'll keep within the actual final release? Yet? Um, not not really, because I I I've played a lot of MMOs. Um, <laughs> I, I pretty much every major one since. WoW, at least, um, or at least in the last probably five years, I've, I've pretty much played and beta tested most of them. Um, and one thing that I have learned is you see this all the time in general chat. Anytime somebody complains about something being broken and you're about a month or two out from release, um, or, or you know maybe even further, but it even happens then, um, is somebody will complain about something being broken and other people will be like, hey, it's a beta. You know, deal with it. It's a beta. They'll fix it. And I have played enough of these, and, and it just it irritates me every time I hear that because I played enough of these that I, I can tell you, no, that <laughs> stuff will not be fixed. I was going to say, yes, yeah, two you're months. Right. Two months is a long time, but a lot of that code is final. And and when it comes to mechanical things, like you said, they're basically past that, and they're the the, the point of balancing and, and polishing and stuff. But this is a fucking MMO world. There is a lot of balancing, and there's a lot of polishing to do, and they won't get to all of it before release. Yeah, you can and so like if, if, it, if you I'm find something vigorously. <laughs> yeah, so like if you if you if you find something now, it's not going to be fixed by release. Period. It's it's not going to happen unless it's something completely fucking like server crashing, game breakingly bad. It's not going to be fixed by then because they they have they have priority lists on this stuff and yeah. Some, if there's something like like for, for instance what Noob's talking about, like the issue there is that basically you can't 100 percent the area and that does suck. However, that will be there at launch because that's not going to be high on their priority because it's not anything that really negatively affects the player experience except for for a very small percentage of players who feel the need to 100% everything. Well, but the thing is they have fixed another skill quest that was in a similar area. So You're I'm talking about the, the human one? Uh, but no, the yeah, one the dude in Gendarn Plains beside the, uh, what is it called? The Vigil Headquarters. Oh, you no, guys don't know. That one. No, no. But no, what I'm yeah, saying, what I'm saying though, basically, is that like people just it, they they just assume because this is in beta, and, and a lot of it I think has to do with just people not wanting to believe that you know ArenaNet or whatever the MMO developer is at the time that this is all happening. 
um, that they just can't fail them. They, the game will be perfect when it releases. This is it's just the way it is because it's beta. Everything will be fixed. Everything will be fine. And like, no, that's not the case. Like, like yeah. I said, I have played enough of these to know these things launch broken. Exactly. Every one of them launches broken. Even Rift, as great as the launch of that game was, still fucking launched broken. There were still yeah. broken things. It's gonna happen. And so for people to say, like, oh, no, don't worry about it. It's just beta. It'll get fixed. Like, no, it won't. You need to bring it to their attention and not expect that it'll actually be fixed in time for launch, but just so that they're aware of it. You can't just assume that everything will be fixed. Because it won't. And that's exactly. the absolute truth of it. Um, and so, like, like I, going back to your question, like, I'm not really, there's nothing I'm really worried about that it won't be fixed by launch day because I know that a lot of it won't be. But the game is playable. <laughs> it is fun. <laughs> There's yes. nothing that is just completely server oh. destroying. Like if there was one thing I could say, maybe even during the stress test, I was still having problems with personal quest stuff. But that wasn't a problem before, so I imagine it's something to do with oh, I have... s- server testing. And so I, I I hope that that's fixed by the time the uh, yeah. game so launches. Was, uh, that's pretty you much know, it. like like I said before with the Ascalon Catacombs, that bug still existed. There's like some strange fix for it. But when you go into the Ascalon Catacombs and you don't actually go in with your party, you're alone in your own instance. That's a big problem. They still haven't fixed. Oh, right. So this is, you're I, talking I, about I the, um, the, that's a the pretty party big problem. Start, parties entering yeah. uh, instances Ascalon Catacombs, Ascalon Catacombs, yeah. Ascalon Catacombs yeah. it, not staying yeah. together. That, that was the yeah, issue? they are in, they jump into their own instance sometimes. Some and, and, and yeah, I would say something like that. Um, I, I think that the reason that exists is because we are just now finally able to start testing that stuff. Right. Um, and that is something that's big enough that I imagine they probably will get to before the game launches, or at least I would hope they would get to, if not before the game yeah. launches, at least within the first week have, have a big fix for that because they can still do that in the first week and, and probably not affect a lot of people um, if it takes that long. But... Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it wasn't enough to. Well, our last beat a weekend event, it was enough. But in this stress test, it worked to the point where you guys still, and we'll talk about this later, hopefully, you guys were still able to get into Ashmore Catacombs and complete it, right? Like, in the end, they could ship with that bug and not be too poorly, like, to come off too badly. Would you say, Noob? Uh, I'd be pretty PO'd. <laughs> And that actually goes for a lot of stuff. Like, for example, I was really hoping that the backlash from the skill changes fix, like right. the, the tiered skill system. Mm, they yeah. didn't get... I'm assuming they didn't read my threat I sent in the mail because I'm <laughs> sure that would have stopped them. But no, it didn't. <laughs> and yeah, that they're, as Duran said, that the, and them themselves, their feature and um, mechanics complete now, I believe. Like they, they're not right. really going to be working too much on that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, for, for release, release, they are absolutely feature-locked at this point. They have to yeah, be. Yeah, they kind of have to be. It's two months. Like, at this point, they're going to be fixing stuff like how, the stuff we noticed with um, missing, di- like, straight-up missing dialogue in cutscenes. Um, yeah. Like, like, the voice acting just not being there. That kind of stuff would be fixed. Yeah, but, like, if anybody's expecting them to go through and do a rehaul of, of a mechanic in the game, they're fucking insane because it's not going to happen. Yeah. Like, from, from here going forward, it's all bug fixes now. Yeah. And, there's, obviously, I think we've all run across a bunch of bugs. But... So this this goes into my next point. Um, so we've only had access to level thirty five maximum content, and the only real stuff. And most people actually, from what I've seen, the guild and what I've seen running around the world, most people aren't really over level fifteen or level twenty or so, right? And mm-hmm. so, like Kessex Hills, for example, the level fifteen twenty five area in the humans in the human zone was pretty much empty for the time we played it, and even the last beta weekend event, and again in this stress test. Um, a lot of people, like a lot of stuff that's actually being legitimately beta tested by a large amount of people, and as we've just stated earlier, there's been a lot of bugs that we've found as beta testers, which we are. Like, I know we're just playing the game, but we're being beta testers here. Um, that are only just getting fixed now because of our input. I'm afraid that in this next beta weekend event, they're not actually going to be opening up too much more to us. Um, I actually, what do you guys think are their problems would be, or if there'll be any major problems with higher level content, for example, uh, level 35 and onwards areas in the game because they haven't been beta tested? What, what are you guys' thoughts? I, I actually disagree with you on that they won't unlock anything new. I really think that in this next uh, beta weekend, we're going to see the new, new races unlocked. We're going to get into that. Um, but in terms of but actual higher level content. In terms of high level content, that's, oh, yeah, that, no. that, is, that is a worry that I have. I think they're, they're making the same mistake that Blizzard did with their quote unquote beta for Diablo 3. 
Um, they're holding back a lot of that higher level content, and because of it, it's not getting tested. And I imagine what they're trying to do is they're trying to take the the feedback that they've gotten about the lower content and kind of extrapolate that and yeah. and, and use that for fixing things in the higher content. Absolutely. But we saw how that worked with Diablo, and that is that it didn't. Yeah, the, um, like Inferno mode and Diablo. I think did, yeah. you, you did a recent run of that. Is, is it fixed now? It's a lot better now. Yeah, like I'm, okay. I'm actually I'm, I'm able to, to progress finally. But we're talking what two months after the release of the game, I can finally play it. So, yeah. like that's what I'm worrying about with with Guild Wars Two. Is like they have done, like the, the content we're able to see for the most part is very well done and and, and very. I mean there. There are bugs here and there, but a lot of it is stuff that is that they said is going to be last minute things going in, like the dialogue and things like that. Like they 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 warned us ahead of time that yes, this dialogue is missing, but it's it's probably because we we re recorded it and we just haven't put those recordings into yeah. the the game files yet. Um, but what I'm worried about is that higher level content because we haven't seen it. It hasn't been tested. And most importantly, it hasn't been balanced. Yeah, and especially with the the way that the systems in this game work, um, especially with the changes now that they've made to kind of tearing out the, the skill sets and everything, that balancing to that, that higher level stuff is going to be crucial. Otherwise, you're going to run into the same issue that, that Blizzard did with Diablo, where, you know, like I said, they, they tested up to level 13 Act 1. And because of that, the higher level stuff, the higher level skills, higher level content, and balancing of enemies was completely out of whack because it was never properly balanced. Exactly. You can have, they have obviously had a closed beta test that's been running for months and months, but so did Blizzard. Um, and obviously, NCSoft is a different company to Blizzard, but there's definite advantages to having a large amount of people give, all giving feedback, especially since a lot of those beta testers are like internal guys or friends and family folks who've been playing the game for a long time. But when new players come up against a lot of this content, for example, I, I think one of the major things we all, well, half of us really experienced were like Nubarama and Tarkin, you, you guys both uh, went into the area just outside Lion's Arch, right? Yep. yep. Um, and I think the general feedback from that area, and that's, that's that was an area only recently released uh, for the last beta weekend event that we were, like players only got really got to experience really recently, and almost universally the feedback for the area was it just didn't feel as polished or as interesting as the starting areas, both in terms of like objectives for the um, for the dynamic events, but also. Just stuff like the dynamic events having weird timings to them, just not being there when you expected them to be, or just having large stretches where you're walking around and there's nothing happening. Like, did, did you guys feel like, am, am I accurately portraying um, your Partly, thoughts? I would sort of, because um, a big chunk, well, I'm, it's not a big chunk, but the very northern east corner of that map is the home of the Vigil, and that's like a big thing, I'm assuming. That's completely locked for this beta event right and vigil is like one of the three major guild archetypes or something like that you can join in terms of like story mode and um there's a lot of more interesting stuff scattered around gendarin fields than there are in the starting areas like mini dungeons and stuff like that so in terms of interesting stuff it's not that it's lacking it just concentrated in specific areas and not really spread around Exactly. So there's so, a, there are quite a bit of stretch like you said there's quite a bit of stretches of you know walking around aimlessly almost but yeah. you know in some zones it's very exciting while in others there's a, it's a big contrast exactly and that all comes back down to balance um not necessarily balance in terms of mechanics but balance in terms of player experience in an area and that's only one zone i assume they've already taken a bunch of feedback from that and i i, I We'll get into what we think is going to be in this beta weekend, right? But I, if it is in there, then I assume that it'll be changed up a little bit. Those those uh, dynamic events will be moved around a bit, and perhaps some of them. I think a, l- a large amount of the feedback was uh, a bunch of the heart quests in the area were a bit too collectathony, a little bit more uh, too much about filling numbers up. Um, and hopefully, that'll be a little bit closer to being interesting. But um, that's only one area, and that's the newest area that we've been exposed to. So there's literally maybe tens, if not a hundred more areas in this game that we've never seen access to. And I'm worried that with that being less polished than the starting areas, which are obviously very smoothed out and wonderful because so many people beat their heads against it by now. They've had so much feedback on each and every quest by having the feedback forms and the betas that are they're silky smooth. I'm worried that higher level areas will just not have that polish, will have the same issues, if not bigger issues, because... Stuff like difficulty scaling wouldn't necessarily be completed 
because they just haven't let us beta test them yet. Thoughts? What do you mean by difficulty scaling? So, for example, the Shatterer is some we saw in the ending events, right? And that's a big ass. That was the big ass um, dragon that everyone didn't get to fight here. But we've seen past press footage and beta footage of uh, like a level 30 area where everyone was fighting this gigantic dragon, right? Um, I don't think we've ever been exposed as a, as a larger beta community to a boss fight of that magnitude, for example. So without... But that's something I feel like you could pretty well recreate in a smaller closed beta setting. Okay. But, but that's just one example. I, I actually think that you can't. Not in terms of um, the difficulty of that battle specifically, but difficulty scaling. Like, you just can't throw as many people at it in as, in as varied a frequency in terms of um, when people come, when people leave, that kind of stuff, in a closed beta event as you could in a um, lot larger beta event. For example, if in a larger beta event, if that boss was there and it takes half an hour to take down, then you're more likely to have a case where some people, like at some points, 20 people will be fighting him. At some points, 50 people will be fighting him, but then it'll maybe shrink deck down to 30 or 20 as people lose interest or have done it a bunch of times and now leaving again. Stuff like that. And seeing if his scaling matches the amount of people playing and that kind of stuff and he stays interesting... Things like that you couldn't really test, even in a... But I feel like you could do that with a controlled group. You know, you could put in X amount of people and pull them out. To to some extent, maybe, but then you also have to take into consideration things like not not just balancing around the number of people, but also the wide variety of um, builds that people could be running with doing this. I mean, you just, you straight up need those numbers for things like that. Exactly. And and they just can't balance that now. Like They'd have to balance it after release, which I'm Mm -hmm. kind of concerned about. Like... The fact that they announced another beta week event, and don't, don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely excited about it. I'm going to play it. But I was expecting a couple of beta weeks. Like, I, I was honestly expecting towards the release date that there'd be a while yeah. where they just let us play for right. a large period like of time. A, like, a, like a, a soft release of like a you know week before head start, give you like a good four or five days or something to play. Yeah. And to just wipe all our characters and just start from scratch. And and again, like for, for the purposes of that soft release, like kind of get an idea of how... The servers will handle the initial login, and then from there, like, people's progression rate. You'll be able to see, like, how people are progressing through so they know kind of how far down they need to worry about um, making sure this content is solid, balanced, and locked. Yeah, and, and beyond that, if, for example, the Shadow was a level 30 thing, then there'd be a bunch of people to try him out, and you'd be able to balance things like him, larger events, more people would have opportunities to get into those dungeons, for example. Like, I think I only know around 7 people or 12 people who've done Ascalon Catacombs, and that's out of a guild of about 50. Um, I don't know how many people actually eventually... Like, they haven't released numbers of how many people actually threw themselves at the dungeon. And even then, there, I, I think we'll get into it, but there are obviously some balance concerns, or there was uh, from the press coverage a while ago. Um, so stuff like that, like... Things you can accomplish by larger play sessions, by a large amount of people, letting a lot of people from open beta take on the Shatterer, for example, that they just can't balance now, and they'd only be able to balance after release. Um, and that's that. That is a fear. I, that's a concern I have. You know. Yeah, that was that was one thing I, I I worried about even from the kind of announcement of the first beta weekend was that they were kind of going with this um, style of instead of having kind of a more you know open closed beta where it's just kind of an ongoing thing to just having just weekends and then only once a month ish. Yeah. And th- and then for them to only have had two and then announce the release date like there's been so little public testing of this game like that that really is a bit worrying. Yeah, and and, and again, we we're excited that it's being released so soon. <laughs> I guess I guess we're almost being contradictory, but um I would Well, we're, we're we're excited to get in there and play the game because we've been anticipating playing it for so long, but there are still there's still the worry in the back of our heads about, you know, well we're so excited to play it because we haven't really had a chance to play it, even though we've had <laughs> as much of a chance to play it as we could outside of being press. Exactly. And that's that's what's scary. Yeah. And um, it's just things that, like, even now, they haven't really gotten down merely and ranged balance yet. Um, I, I still they still haven't. Like I know a bunch of people um, have said that Melee has improved significantly, and I agree. I did play a bit of Melee over the weekends and the stress test. Um, it has improved, but it isn't quite there yet for example I, I can make a build for almost every class i play that out damages the melee um variant of it just in terms of 
extended DPS, like a DPS over a large period of time, because melee has has to spend a lot of time dodging that kind of stuff or switching. Well, that, that's not really what bothers me so much. Like that's that exi- Like the the idea of ranged maybe just you know being more powerful than melee isn't really what bothers me. If that if that's in there at launch. It's more so the possibility of hitting a brick wall as melee because you're just not powerful enough to actually the you know, maybe three just solo through the content. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm worried about is the Diablo 3 problem. Like yeah. melee just not being able to, to continue and enjoy playing the game. Like if, if they're less powerful than their ranged friends, like yeah, that, that creates some problems, especially in PvP. Um, but those are problems that can be dealt with post-launch. Um, but they, when you they, straight up they, like, they are problems that can be dealt with post launch. But I'd preferred it if they got it nailed. Oh, right. absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I mean, at, at the same time, they have to release at some point. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and and I don't think anyone here will ever complain about an August twenty eighth. <laughs> <laughs> well, and especially as a game with, with without a, a subscription um, model, like they've got to get this out there. They've got to get the copies sold because that's what's going to further um, development on the game. Yeah, exactly. And and whatever server issues. Um, amounts they're paying for bandwidth or whatever i assume that they're paying for quite a lot for that and they haven't charged too many people yet obviously they charge pre-purchases but aside from that anyway um so in general there are concerns i don't think anyone has too big a thing that they're worried about for me it's the skill system but i can reconcile the fact that that's not going to change if yeah. ever at least till months after the release um so my, my next point would be just continuing from that what do you guys think is going to be in the next beta weekend event um, I, I think I'll start with Durin because you got into it a little bit before. Uh, what 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 do you think we're gonna see? Uh, um, well, like I said, like I said before, I I really I would be terribly surprised in the worst way possible if they don't have the new races in the next uh, beta weekend event. Not because I want to play them, because obviously I do. I really I'm super excited to play the Asura, um, but more so. Going back to what we were talking about before, the, the, this idea of having content that is untested at launch. Yeah. And it's one thing to have high-level content that's untested, but to have entire starting zones that are just completely untested exactly. is scary. Because the luxury and, 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 of and, having and, a high-level zone untested is that players are going to take a while to get there anyway. Um, yeah, mo- most players won't somewhere. be there within the first probably three weeks. Yeah. But when it comes to starter areas, they really do have to be as smooth as like River Rock. They really do yeah. have to have that like constant testing, pushing, tugging um, on that content to get them down. And we haven't seen because we've we've had this discussion before. We've, we've talked about what we think is going to be next beta we've, all, we've we've done it so many times by now that it's actually getting a bit boring. And I assume it's boring to most. I assume it, but that, now we actually have an opportunity to look at the game as we played it so far and know that it's only two months out. And again, this beta weekend event is only in three weeks from now, right? Only well, in three weeks. Um, and we still haven't played two of the races. Uh, well, and the timing of this beta weekend is extremely important, too. And I think that's why this is important to talk about what we think might be in this one. Because this beta weekend event is about a month before release. Yeah. Which is 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 close enough for people to kind of get that last, you know, last hit in before <laughs> the, the game launches to kind of hold them over. But most importantly for ArenaNet, if they, assuming that they actually do put the races in with this one, which... I think, like, combined with the release date announcement as well as the accidental um, release of that YouTube video of the uh, Sura Oh, um, we actually talked about that last week. Apparently, apparently that was uh, a bit of a um, misnomer. Uh, anyway, uh, let's just, let's just, dis- just take into your mind the d- discount that particular fact. But they have okay. released a lot of footage, for example, um, in the uh, recent blog posts. There have been a lot of Asura pics in there. And in mm-hmm. this... Um, recent announcement video there was definitely a good section on the asura and the silvari in that video um so I, I, it does kind of remotely hint somewhat to there being yeah asura, silvari content, and, and so. yeah and so it being like just a, a month out from from the release like that gives them just enough time to you know implement those zones in there and those those races and have some testing uh data there for them to work on leading up to the release of the game because exactly. again, like like even if they you know needed to make some pretty drastic changes to those zones between the time of the beta weekend and the release, that's stuff that doesn't have to be on the disc. That could, that could be just a, you know a day one patch, which we know is going to happen. It happens with every game, yeah, um, MMO or non. <laughs> <laughs> so like we know that patch is going to be there. So like if they need to, do need to make some pretty dramatic changes, um, that can always be you know on, on that patch as opposed to like 
having to be pressed onto the disc itself. So, yeah, and, and I, with the, day, I, the digital releases nowadays, they don't have to worry about too much about that. Yeah, yeah, even, absolutely. Even that. So, like, I mean, I- anymore with MMO releases, they they put the client on the disc, and then you just download it through through their client anyway. Anyway, yeah, and so like, it's not beyond doubt that they really do have the opportunity to make a lot of changes or make a lot of bounces in that final month, especially if they all start pulling all nighters, which to be faced to be true, like they're probably going to do that anyway. Um, game developers just, they, they do that job for a reason. They love making games. So I assume that uh, anyone would, would be doing that. I, I especially would if I was in that position, but um, yeah, like, so I, I guess my previous thoughts were that I actually, because I used to assume that the game would come out in November, my previous thoughts were, hey, they probably wouldn't put in the new races and they probably won't um, wipe out characters, even though I hope they did. That has definitely become, I'm pretty sure they kind of have to put in the new races and they kind of have yeah. to wipe out characters because they really should. I don't should. think they're going to. You don't think they're right? Well, it's, we've been talking a lot. Noob and Tarkin, what are you guys' thoughts? So Tarkin, what, what do you think is going to be in the next beta? Do you think they're going to put in the new races? or? I think they will. But they're not going to wipe the characters. Okay, I agree. Interesting. Nope. The, the reason the reason why they wouldn't wipe them just r- real quickly because two of us have said this now. Um, <laughs> the reason why they won't wipe them it goes back to what we were talking about before. They need to test that higher level content, and the worst thing they can do right now is oh, make everybody man. start back at one again. I, I, they I need actually, those people who want well, to continue characters. Thinking. Like there's you may couple, not want to. There's no way they can a test higher level content. Yeah, that they have to test it. This is the only way they can do it. This is their last chance to test like, it. I don't think it's, they're adding higher like level content. If they content. don't wipe, they I don't think they're wiping the characters, but I doubt they are adding higher level content. So you think they won't wipe the characters, will put in the races, and won't put in higher level content, Noob? Yep. Interesting. Because I'm insane. Because I'm insane. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I think, that's an interesting perspective. <laughs> I, I, I don't see why they wouldn't, as long as they actually have it somewhat ready. So there's three concurrent discussions here, and we should probably break them out, because they're worth discussing each on their own. <laughs> so... New races, right? Let's just let's just take that one first because we've already pretty much discussed it to death. Wait, can I'm I justify sure. my point though? Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. Because I'm sure while they want like new people to do, uh, what is it called to make new characters as a Sur and Savari, I'm sure they want people to use their existing characters as well. Because it's not like your characters are limited to only those zones. Those exactly. existing characters can That's go to Sur point. and Silvari zones, mm-hmm. and they point. can also test out like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be new characters that are in those Sur and Silvari zones, you know, testing out the content. And by adding new content, they wouldn't be doing, the, doing themselves a favor because people are going to be moving on to the new content in terms of higher levels, and they won't be in the Sur and uh, Silvari zone. So I think they're just going to centralize the content in terms of, like, just to the Silvari and Asura zones, but they won't limit it to new characters only. They'll Listen, have those are actually characters. pretty well without an excellent thoughts, Snoop. <laughs> I actually didn't think Thank of you. it that way. I, I, I actually have to disagree with you on the, the higher level content part because the, the thing you have to realize there's there's a lot of players playing this game and a lot of players that have different ways that they prefer to play a game. And there are people who don't necessarily want to continue creating also and who didn't want to play a Silvari or a Asura and would rather just continue playing through and right, that's, that, once that testing. So right, they, wait, wait, that's wait, exactly what it will do. Like, down. if if you're not so, adding in noob, like higher level content, noob. yep. Noob. All right, we'll get there. We'll get there. I promise you, right, we'll get there. Right. <laughs> um, so first, we'll take on the obvious first one. Do we think they're going to put in the new races? I believe they yes. have to. New du- Duran believes they kind of have to as well. New Brahma, do you think they're going to put in the new races? Yes. Of course. And Tarkin? Yes, they have to. They kind of have to, right? Yeah. That's, that's the general consensus from the Lincoln Cast crew. Yeah. They kind of have Unless to. Unless they the do announce, home. like, from all, the uh, beginning of August to the end of August, they, they're they giving a full beta period, which they which, probably won't do. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good point, dude, because they haven't said that yet, but yeah. there's no reason they couldn't. Yeah, there's exactly. no reason that after this beta weekend, Ooh. they couldn't say, okay, yeah. we're going to do a soft soft launch, you know, a week before. All they um, said was final beta weekend. Start. They never said about beta anything. Yeah, and, the, and it's not unprecedented for MMOs to have a soft launch. I don't think they will. I, I, I like, honestly think that yeah. even though that's a very good possibility, um, I, I would love to see them ha- that happen because, as I said earlier, I do have concerns in terms of balancing all this other stuff. I think that the fact that they've only said, like, they announced the beta weekend event a month in advance and have been underlining the fact that we'll get that three day head start, I don't believe they'll also give us a week or so of gameplay, even though I'd love to, to do so. But, um, Darkeen, do, do so do we all think they will put in the new races. They kind of have to. It's a month against release. So the second question in the overarching um, three points thing would be, 
uh, do we think they're going to put in higher level content? Do, you, do no. we think they're going to put in stuff over level 35? Um, no. Durin, what are your thoughts? What are the positives and negatives of it? I, I think they will because, again, like they, they need that content tested um, as much as they can. And, and there are people who, while they do want the, the Asura and the Silvari stuff tested, absolutely, if, if that goes in there, they want it tested. Um, they, they have to understand that, that players, not all players want to start a new character or want to go down to those zones, um, which I, I know that they, you know, it scales back and all that stuff, but some people just want to see the higher end. They, I mean, go, you know, going back to the Mr. Pandaria, um, beta, like they've, they kind of kept upping things and upping things and upping things, but what players really wanted was just to see the 90 content. They wanted to see the rating content. They wanted to see the end game. Like a lot, there are players that care about that and, that's good for arena net that they exist because then if they do release the, the, the Sir and the Silvari stuff, um, and they also release the high level content, they'll have plenty of people to test both. Now, they don't, I don't, I don't feel like they have enough time to test both because they're putting this stuff in so late in the, the beta process, yeah. um, and so little time or yeah. so little actual gameplay. Um, but I absolutely think they're going to because, like I said, they, they need as much of this game tested as they can before they launch the game. Yeah. I, I, I... I think that you are right, but I also think there's a second way of looking at it. Um, so going slightly, just putting a toe back into it, into the races discussion, a lot of people have speculated, and I, I've, I think, been quite vocal about my agreeance with them, that wouldn't it be cool if they held back the new races, or at least one of the two new races, for example, the Silvari to release, so none of, no one gets spoiled on it? Like, that would be cool, not. but I don't think it's a good idea. People said the same thing about Diablo 3. I had friends that I was talking to when the Diablo 3 beta was going on that I was arguing with them why this was a terrible decision for them to have held back the game for story reasons and only had us beta test the Act 1 stuff and told them that like this is going to this is gonna cause balance issues. I know that when this game launches, there are going to be issues with the later game content because it wasn't being properly tested. They said no, they did this because the story was important and this is the best decision, and we see how that turned out. And I think that that's the same thing here. Like, they... That t- that stuff has to be tested. You can't Parking? just extrapolate that stuff. Do you agree with uh, Duren? Y- yes, but um, in the fact that they're relying too much on their internal beta testers. And mm-hmm. yeah. we've seen from Guild Wars 1, their internal beta testers just can't cover the scope of Guild, Guild Wars 1. And Guild Wars 2 is even bigger wait, what's, than that. Wait, I, I wasn't really there close to launch. What, what do you mean by that? Elaborate. Um, I'm talking about how Whenever they're adding new areas, in including stuff like factions, nightfall, they have lots okay. of bugs. That so just like actual gameplay bugs or like quests that don't work. What do you, what do you mean? Pretty much like quests, some gameplay, um, but right. in general, lots of little things pop up. And that's not including yeah, like, the, the big things that they might have missed. That's true. Like Every game that comes out, right, um, there is definitely an equivalence, and we've seen it time and time again, between the amount of beta testing that they can do and the polish of the game. Like Almost every um, famous developer out there who's released a very porous game is cited as saying that the QA process was a huge benefit to the final development. And in terms of MMOs, obviously for for various reasons, QA is really difficult if you're working with this, a small, close-knit group of people doing all the QA for hundreds, if not thousands of hours of content. They just cannot get to the same depth. They can get the same uh, width or like broadness of the, um, the quality assurance, but they just can't get the same depth as having people throwing themselves at the game. So I, I think... Wait, so everyone's essentially in agreement here. No, they're not, except for Noob. Um... I believe, in, and as with Durin, that they should do high-level content in the same way that um, I love the idea of them holding back two races for the release, and the, I love the idea of them hoping, holding back the higher-level content to release. We are, in the end, beta testers. Like That's what we signed up for. I know a lot of people are just getting this to have early access to the game, but we do. I, I feel that they really do need to chuck just straight up hundreds and thousands of people at that content to get it balanced and get it down. And I actually do I agree that I would love to see them put in higher level content in addition to the new races, even though they they will have the issue of maybe having a little bit broader, a little bit shallower of a death because obviously more people, even if they're working with hundreds of thousand people, 
that still will be directed by what they put in new. So like half the people might not be able to make it, for example. But if they give us both new areas, like new uh, Silvari level content and and, and do, uh, Asura content, their starting areas and higher level content, and obviously they have that split of some people going on and doing the higher level content. Some people going to do the Silvari content. I still think that's more beneficial than just doing one of the two. Noob, Absolutely. you're the one who mainly disagrees. What what's your right. response to that? Um. I feel like the importance of getting the starting zones right compared to the importance of optimizing the later higher level zones is very different. You know, you want to get the beginning zones as perfect as you want or as you can because that's where people will be jumping in first. You want to have the strongest and best uh, um, impression on them. And by beta testing with as much people as you can on that specific zone you're allowing, you know, to find a lot more bugs and do a lot more, you know, I don't know what the term is. What's the term? I, Finding I, a lot more results, I guess, in right. comparison if you more only data. had, let's say, three, yeah, more data than if you had half the people doing other level content somewhere else and only half the people there to play the, you know, content Durin, in what's the... Your, what's uh, your response there? I, I absolutely agree with you that I, in the respect that if they were to do one or the other, absolutely the starting level stuff is way more important to do for, for the launch um however when you're dealing with an open beta when you're dealing with a public beta i guess i should say instead of an internal beta you you can't force the beta testers to work on certain content and and that goes back to what i was talking about earlier like there are just there are some people that just aren't interested in testing or playing that content and all you're doing by not including the other content for them to test is just reducing potentially reducing the numbers of people that are going to do that stuff like if they if if all they put in there are the silvari and the um, the Asura new stuff, there are going to be players that aren't interested in that stuff, and so all they're going to do is they're, they're probably just going to sit in the worldview world all weekend or something, or, or doing an Escalon all weekend. Like That's good testing still, but they would rather that testing go to new stuff than to stuff that maybe has already been tested before, and since you can't force those people to necessarily go and work on just those two zones, unless you just only have that section of the game be the beta test, which would be insanity... <laughs> um, then you you need to you need to offer that other stuff because some of those people won't want to do. Well, you it. have people like me. Like for me, I, I I think I've said this before. I don't want to see Divinity's Reach to release, right? So when I went to Divinity's, Divinity's Reach, I did this thing where I got my character. I was hoping someone else. So I didn't go that by choice. I, I got my character, went into his instance, and then what I did was I pointed the camera at the ground and then scrolled out as far as I could so <laughs> I could see very directly around me, and that's how I played the game. Like. In the same way, I don't want to see the Silvari content to release. I'll say that right now. I, I'm pretty sure I'm rolling Silvari as my second character. And even then, I love their lore. And that's only because I'm, I'm a human fanboy, right? I, I think that humans are the way to play these games. I think the story has always been about humanity and, their, and, and that kind of stuff. I, I may be wrong about that, but either way, I'm going to play human first. But I'm going to play Silvari second. And... I don't want to see it. I just, I, even if they put, even though it's the only new content for this next beta weekend event, I'm still not going to play Silvari. And what Durin is saying is, if that is the only new content and I still wouldn't say, play it, then you're missing out on me possibly doing beta testing for you. Right, but you wouldn't want to accidentally attract people into the new content and not have them go into the Silvari and Asura content. You want as much people as possible in that Usher and Savari content you and do. I feel like by restricting it there that's the best way to get the most amount of people as you can in there but it's not though because the thing is the, the people that are interested in seeing that content are going to go do that there are plenty there are tons of people that are in the beta that have been talking about it. they just can't wait to, try, to check out that content like there will be people to do that by restricting it all you're doing is restricting the possibilities of new content being tested because, no, because again, like you can't force people to go in there and do that. There's no way it, to guarantee if, if we only do this, then we will get the maximum number of people coming in to, to test this. If they added higher level content and the Asura playing zone for the next uh, beta test, I would not be playing the Asura or Silvar playing zone. I would be I, playing I would the be higher playing level Asura. content. Well, Even if they put in higher level content, there are plenty of people who keep 30. making new characters. And yeah. Yeah. a lot of people are There's not even plenty of people who haven't 20. even seen level 15, 25. Yeah, exactly. Most people have. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that like, 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 like saying saying that, that by limiting it um, to just that content is going to increase the number of people in there. Like that is making some very very wild assumptions about the um, play styles of everyone in the op- or in the the beta. That's a very good point, and it comes back to what I was saying before. We have a fifty person or so guild, and I think only about twenty of us are even over level thirty. 
No, no, yeah. not even. About not 15 even. of us are available. Less than 15. There's like um, 10. Yeah. So so we we're looking at that as the amount of people who could even consider playtesting higher level content. And the rest of us are probably more likely going to the new content, like absolutely new content with areas we haven't seen before, than continuing to push through our characters trying to get up to level 30 to, to get that level 45 content, for example. I think it's a really good point to say that I think there's two really good points here. Noob's excellent point was I can still look at the Asura content with my level 26 human, right? Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's a fantastic point. I can go there and I can experience level one content as if I was a level one because of level scaling. Um, I think that's great. And I think it's a really good uh, thing that for them to do. If they only give us Asura and Silvari new areas, I'm pretty sure everyone who still wants to see those areas, for example, I won't be going to Silvari will have wonderful amounts of new content. But at the same time, for people who don't, um, that higher level stuff, which is only accessible to those 10 out of 50, 1 in 5 players from just our guild, and probably even works out to less than that, if you look at the vast majority of people doing these betas, um, why not allow for at least the possibility of people beta testing those areas? Like, uh, do you know? Yeah, I mean, there, there are people... I, who for are, one, would be completely distracted by that. I would not I would not go to the Silvario or Sora areas. But I, I would. Because the I thing get is, the higher level content. The, the thing is, though, Noob, is you can't down. use yourself as a metric for the entire player. Right, but I'm, I'm yeah. assuming there, I'm not the only person who would do that. That's true. Yeah, but you're, you're probably not. Also but, in the minority. Like, just from my, yeah, you're, just from you're our... probably not. But at the same time, there are people that play in, in, like I said, in these betas or in these games in general that, like, all they are interested in doing is powering their way through to see the, the later and later stuff. They, they want to see all that new higher end. They want to see all the new, new zones, new bosses, new dungeons, new you know out, outdoor stuff. Like That's what they want to see. They don't care about the starting zones. They want to power through that stuff as fast as they can so they can get to the good stuff. For example... In their, in their eyes. I, I would be very hard... Pr- if I was level 40 right now instead of level 26 and they did have the Shatterer boss fight in the next Beta Weekend event... I would overcome my love with the Asura to play that boss fight. I would love to fight the Shatterer, even if I had the option of doing... Um, right, that's that's a pull away from yeah, people who could possibly in be playtesting the instance, they're actually the getting the Shatterer beta tested, and I would have to be level 40 to even consider doing that. And I'm not. I'm level 26, and most people are even lower level than me. Uh, most of us would instead be doing the beta f- testing for the Asura and Silvari starting areas. Yeah, and so, I would say so, that if even if I was at whatever the level cap was for this last beta weekend, I probably still would be going and testing the the, um, the starting zones because I'm really interested in seeing what those zones look like and how they play through. And, and I just fucking love the Asura. They look awesome. And considering that so, there's, what, 100,000, if not more, people playing these betas, and you get this this very two, three, um, two to one split, two, two-thirds of the people going towards the um, new content and one-third of the people actually... Um, going to the higher level content, that's a fantastic split for the Beta Weekend event. Wouldn't you agree? No. No, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. No, no, but I feel like... Why Why would they... Because I feel like their objective of this beta test would be to completely optimize the Asura and Silvari zones as best as they can. And by doing, and that would require the no, most... No, I'll, I'll tell you what their available. objective for this beta test is. They, they not too long ago, you know, I think it was just before Beta Weekend 2 opened everything up to, you know, even non-pre-purchasers being able to get into the beta weekend. At this point, they are still doing some beta testing, and they absolutely do want to see those those um, starting zones, you know, tested. But I think more than anything, they just want to get as many people in here and just get, they, they just want to get the sheer numbers. They want to, they want to crunch those numbers and take that back and, and balance things properly. Like, there is no just one zone, like, this is what they're focusing on. Like, they just, they want fucking people in their game. <laughs> that, is, that is their goal with this. Uh, it would round that out that discussion. I think we've we've knocked that on the head and done it to death. Parking, do you have? You guys are wrong. You guys are wrong. Do you have any uh, thing to add to there? I think they pretty much did the beaters completely wrong. Given that, Ooh, right. okay, <laughs> they should have done it piecemeal. Like one beater. I think that's a fantastic idea for if, if they're going to do these weekends like this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and one I, weekend for. I, I actually am completely and totally and utterly agree with you. I, 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 I would have vastly preferred to them doing a level one to fifteen beta, doing a level twenty five to thirty beta, or whatever it would be, level fifty to sixty beta. I gave everyone not only a lot of time with the game and a lot of time to, to beta test them, but also allow people to see that content doesn't peter off after level fifteen. Like 
as I said, with the Lion's Arch area, I'm concerned with higher level zones because we haven't seen them yet and no one's getting a chance to beta test them. We're not sure if they've been balanced properly. Um, if they did something like what Tarkin is suggesting, or I assume I've interpreted it correctly, um, then we'd have that those fears later as well and those beta testing done for those areas. I, I actually think, yeah, I'm with you, Tarkin. I, I think they pretty much did this all wrong. I hate to say that because I love Anet, but yeah, I, I would have done it that way instead. Um, but in, in terms of this beta weekend event, do you think that um, they're going to be giving us higher level content, Tarkin? I'm on the fence. Um, I, I, I really want to want them to introduce higher level content, or at least just fix up what what's already there. But I don't think they. I have a feeling that I don't think they will. I, cool. think, I think they'll just introduce and the starter areas. For because the they're smart, like me, and I'm super smart. <laughs> because like stuff like Endurance actually... Fields still needs um, beta testing. Yeah. And very uh, few I people are, very much are, are even there. So there's no point introducing yeah. even higher level content if there's very few people. That's, that's a good point as well. I would say if, if there was a point, it's because this is their last chance to do it before mm. launch. Mm. And, I mean... If the content is there, if they if they have it, you know, like they're saying, their content locked at this point. If the content is there, why not put it in there? Cool. And we'll round out that discussion there. I, I think we'll probably do a podcast where we all say what we're planning to play for the betas uh, just before the next beta, like we did last time. It was really successful, so we'll do it again. And we'll give recommendations of what people should check out. Um, we'll also do one about release. I, I, I plan to do a podcast where all of us uh, discuss what what we think we're going to play, what for, what uh, classes we think we're going to play, what races we think we're going to play, that kind of stuff. But we actually have other stuff to get to. We are at an hour and uh, about 20 minutes or so, and we should take a, we should, we definitely have some stuff to talk about um, in terms of the stress test that went bye-bye because things actually got done. New Barama, do you want to take us through what you got done? I think uh, you finally got into Ascalon Catacombs, is that right? Right, with the hitch. So uh, basically... At the beginning of the stress test, we gathered up a group for Ascalon Catacombs. So we got Shinboy, uh, you'll never remember named Siegs, me, and a random. And I feel like someone's missing. Yeah. And subjugation, right? <laughs> subs. And um, subs, right. And uh, so we met in front of Ascalon Catacombs. And then because last time I had a bad experience with Tarkin and a couple of other people trying to get in there where we would well, yeah, keep so on through it. So dropping. last time what happened was you, you spent about two hours or so. I think it was or you just run us through it. Something like an hour and a half. Yeah. And, and, it, you, uh, uh, and we were attempting to play Ascalon Catacombs. And basically what was happening is we'd enter the zone and basically three of us would spawn in the same instance, but the other two would be in their own instances. So they were in alone in the dungeon. Oh, right, and we definitely. couldn't get that fixed, so everyone was going into their own different instance. So um, did, that, and did that solve itself this time around? No. Four of us got in the same instance, but uh, Subjugation was in on his own instance. And basically what the fix apparently was, um, was you got to go back to your home area, so your home instance for personal story quests, and then go in there, come back, and then do the thing, because so, it resets the instance. And that was the uh, makeshift fix that seemed to work. Wow. And okay. that's how we all got connected. So how did you find out about that? Was it the forums or? Uh, no, Siegs just knew it. Apparently okay. that's how we fixed it before. Wow. Um, right. right. Yeah, it's a bit complicated. I don't know why they did that. So we got into the dungeon. So the makeup was uh, one guardian, one warrior, two thieves, and an elementalist. Okay. That was our group. Uh, the random is elementalist. And we came in. And so basically, I have a bunch of questions to ask about right. your thoughts on this dungeon, but I, I think we'll get that towards the end. What I want you to do first sure. is tell us the story. Tell me the story of what the dungeon was like, what it, what you saw, what was in there, that kind of stuff. Well, should I talk about the story or sure. no? What, I won't, just I won't. tell me, spin me a yarn. About basically, what it's like was. there's a cutscene, a very nice cutscene. It was in the big. It was one of the famous cutscenes from the. PC gamer apparently did a run through of Ascon Catacombs, right. and it's um it's a part of the main story. So let me just clarify: there's two types of dungeons you can do in here. There's the explorable area, which is for level 35s and up, and there's the story mode, is when you first do it. Gotcha. Uh, 
Um, so when you first do it, it's a story mode, and story mode is for level 30s. So wait, does, does basically, everyone, do we know if um, everyone ends up doing this dungeon as part of their personal stories, or is there is it uh, just like... Yep, yeah, I feel like because this is um, where you gather all of the people from Des Destiny's Edge. Or is is that all the, the people, or just Ritlock? Not, not Des is it Destiny's Edge? Is yeah, that Destiny's what it's Edge. Called? Right, right, and um, basically... I'm assuming they're all in the dungeon, at least some of them. So I'm assuming that's people gathering them together. And Ridlock is telling you in a cutscene, Air is um, off on her own, doing her own thing. I skipped it because I didn't want to ru ruin it for myself. But it's it's a really nice, artistic one-minute cutscene, and, and you're dropped into the game. And basically, it's the setting of the place is it's full of ghosts of Ascalon, in, in the literal sense. They're... They're so, the ghosts wait, wait, from. Wait, wait, wait. So where is this? It's uh, in the Char. Um, this is in area, the right? Char starring area. Yes, there's a waypoint called Ascalon, uh, Ascalon Catacombs waypoint, and you go in there, and basically it is a. Uh, let's see, it took us about one hour ish to finish. It wasn't that long, um, so we got in there, and at first we were kind of dumbstruck by how difficult the dungeon was. Um, all of the you know, units in that, like, enemy NPCs in that dungeon are all veterans. So, wait, like, so... The very minimum dungeon, are veterans. I'm going to rewind a little bit, because I, I kind right. of... Because I haven't seen it myself, and I, I found most of the beta coverage, I mean, press coverage kind of lacking, because they don't really spend too much time looking at the place and, like, getting a feel for the area. They kind of just run in and kill stuff and then get out. So, I've never yeah. really had an opportunity to know what it felt like to be there. So... When you got in, was this kind of area, because it looked like a dark kind of um, dingy kind of area. So it's all underground, is it? It's, it's indoors? Right. It's yeah. underground. Yep. Right. And, it's and a so, little catacomb. Yeah, so it's literally a catacomb. Is it the same catalog yep. of catacombs from the first Guild Wars? Like, was there any parody there? No. Or? No. Uh, I don't think so. Cool. It, now that I think about it, it, it does seem kind of similar. It should be in the same area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be. So oh, it does kind of cool. seem kind of similar. Yeah. The, was the there... Down. So... When you get in there, um, was, was okay. So I, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. I, I get, no, can you, can you, tell, can you describe to me stories. what the area was like? Um, it is dark. It's it's rocky, and basically, you the portal. You come into the portal, and there's a stairwell. You come down on on the left side. I sh this is a really bad way of visualizing it. Yeah, just, but there's just, an <laughs> anvil that talks to you. There's a, literally an anvil that says, "Hey, I'll repair your armor." Like. It's it's like they took the text out of a out of a repair person and they just put what? it on this inanimate object. Yeah, an repair what? object. And yeah, and after you get a fix, and it's like try not to break it again. You know that text, and it's like oh, I'll try not to, or that won't happen again, right? It says what? that, and you have to pay your gold to the anvil. And so, does this really feel like there was supposed to be an NPC there and was it broken, or was this an anvil? Uh, no, I think it's. I, I think that's. I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of <laughs> silly, and. Um, so you, I hope they leave that gates in open. <laughs> <laughs> and so the first area is basically a bunch of caskets, and you have to open the caskets to find a key to open a gate. And basically, these caskets are all full of a ghost each, and these are not regular units. These are all veterans. Even though they don't say veteran, they are veteran units. So defeating one, we found, was rather hard. At very at the first time we tried to do it because like when we first got in we didn't really know what each person was doing and like how to you know we didn't formulate a strategy when we came right. in and basically what happened is we died a lot <laughs> in just the first like it's supposed first to take encounter. like assuming yeah like ten minutes in this small zone gated and we'd keep on getting like whenever we'd open more than two caskets and two like ghosts showed up our party would constantly wipe. And then we'd wow. have to respawn, and then walk through, and then wipe. And there was a bit of wiping, and then there was a, and then there was suddenly a dynamic event. There are dynamic events in dungeons, which is strange, oh, okay. but there are. And basically, this giant hole opened up, and then there, it's like a burrow. And then all of these little lizards came running through, and we had to destroy the burrow and kill all the lizards. And that was also... Oh, the lizards weren't veterans, so it wasn't as hard. But it was definitely <laughs> kind of stressful fighting ghosts and lizards at the same time. And we finally got our shit together. We, we killed the lizards and the ghosts one by one, of course. We couldn't take more than one at so, a time, which was really pathetic. Okay, and, so, um, so to... 
I, I guess. All right. So, so my my picture is you. You guys have run into this dungeon. You've never really worked together as a team too much in the past. Yep. I assume because you kind of just like it's right. pretty much a pug. It's pretty much yep. what most people are experiencing if they got into a dungeon for the first time with people they've never played the dungeon before and they don't right. know them very well. Just, even yeah. though in the same guild, it was kind of that same recreation, right? Right. So I, I, I now that I've got like this, this scene in my mind, this this dark like kind of dungeon area. And I, I guess I don't really want too much of the stuff along the way and the surprises along the way ruined for me. And Durin will obviously complain that we're being too long-winded about the entire thing, <laughs> as he always does when we start telling stories on the podcast. But um, Oh, no, I'm actually just kind of, kind of tuning you guys out because I want to actually see that stuff for myself. So. Oh, okay. There you go. So, <laughs> it, so to save everyone from that and to save everyone from Noob's terrible attempt at storytelling, um, <laughs> did you feel... So you got to the dungeon... Was, so the general level of difficulty, did you feel it was more about the fact that you guys hadn't really accustomed eyes yourselves to... Right. After, after a couple times wiping, and, and we once we got our shit together, we found the dungeon, you know, it wasn't difficult and it wasn't easy, but it was slightly on the easier side once we knew what we were doing. Then again, we were using voice chat and there was stuff like that, and um, we definitely formulated a strategy to the dungeon. Well, and slightly on the easier side isn't is is actually a good place to be for right. the first dungeon. In right. The game, so, and basically, what we did—I don't want to spoil like tactics, but no, that's once the I want to hear. We, man. we hit our first hear. brick wall, <laughs> like our first brick wall, right after, right as we got out of the gates after wiping multiple times in that single area, because a boss spawns at the so end of that area. To, what did you do to to overcome that? Did, did everyone just like? Oh, no, no, because it was right beside the spawn. We die, spawn, die, spawn, die, spawn, and just keep on dealing damage. I, are that's you serious? So that's we, how you overcome yeah, that event? That's, um, that's how we did defeat the boss. We camped an event to get yep. to the first area. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, uh, and then we hit our first major brick wall when we got out of the gate, and there were three ghosts. There was a Mesmer ghost and two warrior ghosts. <laughs> And whenever we attacked it, we'd wipe. We couldn't kill a single one. And when These we came back, they, they all reset. Yeah, they all reset. And then we're like, holy shit, what are we going to do? And then we realized that the thief has a snare. Basically, uh, it was scorpion something. I forget scorpion something wire. like scorpion wire. Yes. It basically pulls the enemy towards you. So basically what we did was we target one of the units, scorpion wire them, and then scorpion wire them a second time because we had two thieves. And then we take them out one by one like that. Could that's you, that, I, that sounds pretty damn cool. Um, the fact that, that was literally how we out. got through the entire. If we didn't do that, we <laughs> we would have failed the dungeon. I guarantee it. We would have failed that dungeon. We were you able to like? Were you able to respec in the dungeon? Like, did they yes, have a scorpion we wire were. on them, or did right. they both have to get? They had it. On, you can change it. You can change your skills if you're not in combat, like you could oh, cool. normally do. Yeah. So, um, we did that. Uh, there were traps in the dungeon. So, so wait, did you? Okay, so you're saying to me that the only way you got to that dungeon was you had to pretty much solo, well, get to the point where every enemy or every difficult enemy in the, in the dungeon uh, had to be brought to you and you could tell them. <laughs> well, sometimes we'd aggro like three at a time, and then for some reason at that time we were able to actually kill them. I don't know why the first time we constantly wiped. Okay. But um, after that time, I don't know what happened. Like, we weren't even saying, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to lay this down because clearly nothing was really going on. People were just scam- spamming skills and we were getting through somehow. And then um, there I'm were a lot of right traps. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got to our first boss. There are, there are a lot of boss fights in this dungeon, and it was quite fun. Um, so there was one boss fight, and then you see King Adelburn. Who is the king that caused the faux fire and turned everyone? I like how into you just ghosts. glossed over the entire boss fight. Um, because it it's it's what you can think of a boss fight. Okay, so uh, it's just there like, was a just lot a, of an, an enemy with the a prob- B, a B like the bosses. Or... We had a little. It wasn't much of trouble, but it was just kind of annoying because the bosses are literally invulnerable to most things. You know, they can't be snared, they can't be knocked down, and all. And basically, my elite. My guardian's elite goes around knockdown, so my guardian's elite was basically useless. Really? And um, yeah, because, because they're like, like the Diablo three ultimate... style. No, so Diablo two style invulnerabilities on these right. bosses. It's, they it's don't, pretty much they don't MMO style invulnerabilities. Yeah. Like typically in MMOs, you can't like use CC on bosses. Oh, That's and weird. every time we kill the boss, uh, there's a chest. There's a chest every time you kill a boss. Because in the first Guild Wars, uh, there weren't really too much in the way of bosses, but there were difficult enemies that were much higher level than you. For example, right. level 20 was the level capping of the first Guild Wars, and some of the more difficult enemies were like level 28. And they'd have um, 
they'd be more Auras. powerful. They dealt more damage, but they they didn't have like MMO style. They were substantially powerful. Yep, these are well. To be boss fair, bosses. um, Guild Wars two was or Guild Wars one wasn't really an MMO though. Yeah, well. but this is a five man instance, and that was an eight man instance instance. Uh, so it is very com- comparable. I, I'm surprised they actually doing stuff like this because it doesn't that invalidate a lot of the potential builds out there. I guess it's to combat um, like game well, breaking stuff, like continually knocking him down and stuff like that. Well, you like, can you can like daze him and stuff like that. It just he's invulnerable to knockdowns. Okay, and and he can't be. It, basically, it's on a big platform kind of thing, like a big uh, tower esque thing. And on the bottom, there's water. So I'm assuming the devs just don't want to push him into the water and break the quest <laughs> or something. Um, right, right. But and did you have end, fun? Was it an engaging? Yeah, it was very fun. It was an engaging boss fight. We were okay. yelling out, "Lay this down!" I'm using my res, etc. Just like awesome. typical stuff. That's cool. And um, what is it called? We didn't really use combo fields, which I wanted to do, but I I completely forgot about combo fields. Wow, and, good job, uh, guys. That was unfortunate. <laughs> and after we killed the boss, there was a chest, and that was the first time I think I got a chest. So in, the drop's uh, good in Guild Wars. Um, the chest, I opened it, there was one green and two whites, and that was the best so, chest I had in that entire game, <laughs> out of five chests. So everyone, okay, so this is the story mode, explore, or, sorry, no, story mode dungeon, would right. you, what were your expectations going in? Were you, were you expecting there to be a lot of loot I thought it was XP? a lot, I thought it would be a lot easier, and it would be slightly more looty, but, um, loot... Uh, apparently there's a lot more loot in the explorable version of yeah, the map. Yeah, no, definitely. That's what's um, cool. Yep, yeah, and basically at the end of the mission, you're awarded this helmet, some sort of Ascalon Knight's helmet or something like that. And basically, to complete the set, you need to finish the Ascalon Catacombs explorable area. And um, so that gives people reason to come back. Oh, and apparently that, that's... That's like a pretty and, sweet way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, wait, did everyone get the helm or was it a random piece of the Everyone helm? gets the helm. Everyone gets the helm at the end. That's brilliant. And basically, so after the first boss fight, we talk. There's a short cutscene with King Alibur, and then we do another. We have to defeat three separate bosses, or three bosses, and then there's one boss that's technically two people, right. and um, and each boss was very different. You you know, Ranger. Ah, oh, actually, I shouldn't spoil. You want me to spoil yeah, this? Don't don't it's spoil okay. it too much. But you can say that every okay. boss was pretty different. Um, there was a Ranger boss. There were there was a set of two bosses that were Mesmers. Okay. Um. And then there was a boss, I believe, was a warrior boss. So, like, so uh, did you feel like you had to use different tactics for each boss? Like, is yes, that's the kind of stuff. One boss about. was the two, you know, the two bosses I was talking about. Like the ones, one boss set that was actually two bosses was the most unique one, and that required like a small or like a major variation in your tactics. That's cool. Because basically, what you needed to do is separate them. Don't tell me when they're together. Don't tell. Yeah, this is the part I don't even oh. know. <laughs> oh. oh, well, this isn't lore or anything. Okay, go ahead. Fine. Basically, if these point. bosses, if these two bosses are together, they do a lot more damage, and they're a lot more resilient to damage. So you need to split them apart, like get them distanced, and then you'll that you'll be able to effectively kill them. And that so was Highlander. Cool. Oh, inverse Highlander. What, inverse Highlander. What the hell? What are you going on about? I, okay. Um, anyone know what the reference is? Okay. All right. Go on. <laughs> and then we and then we fight the final boss, who will not be named. And then we get the, and at the end of each boss fight, there's a chest that opens, and they were relatively mediocre drops. Um, so, in summary, I guess you could say that the story mode of the dungeon was challenging but fair. It was definitely something that would be good for. Like a first dungeon, like baby's first dungeon. <laughs> um, the I explorer that, that area that was a, um, is not baby's first dungeon. I caught comes some of the chatter towards the end of it, and you said that there was a repair point in there. So, are, are you saying that you could repair your dun- your stuff during the dungeon? Like, how did it all work out in terms? Of- um, so there, are, there's the beginning waypoint, and then waypoints open up as you kill bosses. So it's actually so waypoints f- within the dungeon. Yep. Those, were those free to get between? They're free the to move around in the dungeon. Did you, okay, so that is probably the best idea ever. <laughs> yep. Uh, there that's weren't that just many. Just in terms of, of running back after you after you wiped or something. Right, because yeah. it, it, it's a very long walk, um, yeah. and there are traps along the way. Oh, that's um, cool, dude! If there are waypoints yeah. in the WBW dungeon, that would be game changing. 
<laughs> Basically, so the, the, there's a waypoint at the beginning, and after you kill each boss, a waypoint opens up so people can spawn after they die in another boss fight, which is oh, very fantastic. useful. Yeah, um, and then weird. in the very start zone, that's where the talking anvil is. <laughs> and um, so, so you could get there and repair your stuff and continue yeah, out. Yeah, it costs money and everything. Because um, if, if I did not repair my stuff, I would probably have lost all of my armor pieces. Let's just say that. Damn. Well, in the this beginning. so cool. Like, after the beginning part, it got substantially easier. I don't know whether the game got easier or we simply got less shit. Yeah. But that's that's up to question. Well, hearing um, how you fought the last... I think I was there on Mumble for the last two bosses and just hearing you guys yeah. wipe over and over and over again. I don't think you got too much better um, <laughs> as the dungeon went on. Well, we never actually completely wiped. We'd basically um, have three people on it at all times and two people okay. would die and then respawn. That's basically what our tactic was. To so constantly did you find that respawning damage. and running back was more efficient than rezzing? Um, sometimes. Because res, my res at least took a very long time to, you know, go over. And yeah, the boss the would off, down. Yeah. And the boss always often targets people that are down. They never leave people that are down. Like, okay, so to they try to revive. defeat you. Like, unless... A good way to do it is um, to die behind... Like, always be behind cover. And, like, peek out and attack. That's actually really useful in that game. Because um, a lot of the times, especially when they're using ranged attacks like obstructions actually work and if you die behind cover then people can revive you without being the threat or being risked keep being killed by the boss and that's a very useful tactic that sounds the fact that you had to take that stuff into consideration it makes me happy i, I like that yeah. these are things that you're doing for a the fir, one of the first if not the first dungeons in the game i believe Right. Um, do you see, do you think you'd be like? There's a couple of questions I have, but probably my first one would be: um, Do you think you revisit revisit this? Do you think it's something you do for fun? Definitely, definitely, it was very fun. Um, the explorer area, we tried it, and um, do not try that unless you are level. <laughs> um, according, like I will quote Seeks on this: Is this is not a, it, it's a level thirty five explorer area, but this is a le- explorer area for level forty fives and up. Who have their gear scaled down and are actually ready to do this? Mm. It is Which exceptionally I, I, hard. I almost want to say I, I thought I heard the developer say that at some point yeah. during right. one of the uh, Total Biscuit videos. Um, you know the one where I talked about like that dynamic event where burrow spawn, like the burrow opens up yeah. and hundreds of those things come out. Um, in the explorable area, there are level thirty fives and veterans, and a hundred of them show up. That sounds <laughs> nuts. Right. And some basically so- what. Um, it's it's very different in the explorer area. It's not a dungeon at all, but um, it's more of like a instance zone. So you're just running around doing quests. There's quests, I believe, inside the dungeon. Right. Like there's like a short quest chain. So and, something like um, the it's um, populated the by friendly and stuff NPCs. Well. Right. It's populated by friendly NPCs too. Um, so you know the what are, the Dermon Priory? Is that the name of the Dermon Priory? Thurman Priory, and they have guys in there like checking out the Ascalon catacombs. And um, yeah, it is it is really difficult. I would not recommend oh, well, it. I go, actually have someone going in the there unless you're ready. Um, Durin, I have listed a bunch of questions for um, noob. Durin regarding... is totally turn totally went to the washroom. Did he? Tarkin, you yeah, there? Yes, Tarkin, Tarkin, your turn. Uh, I have a bunch of questions here for noob regarding these catacombs. Could you ask them them? Uh, it's, it's, it's in the discussion topic under the um, show notes. All right. <clears throat> so it starts with, <laughs> what is your t- team composition and levels? Start there and go on. So, new boy, <laughs> what's your team composition and levels? And I'll be right back. All right. My team composition was, uh, like I said, there were four guildies and one random. Uh, wow, this is a total two-man podcast at this moment. <laughs> uh, so there were four guildies and one random. The random was the elementalist, two thieves, one guardian, one warrior. Um, we had a level 35, level 4, and... Level 4. Two... Or, sorry, level 34. Okay. Sorry. Level 35, level 34, and level 32, level 31, and a level 30. And everyone gets to go down to level 30. Okay. Um, how did you feel the class dynamics while the... while you are playing? How did they... <laughs> Well, like I said, uh, well, like I said earlier, it's a lot 
like those thieves skills with the scorpion wire was really useful. Like I could not have gone through that dungeon at the beginning if we didn't have those two guys like pulling. It was incredibly useful. Um, like the I didn't really get to use the guardian like shields of absorption, absorption, <laughs> shields shields of absorption as much as I would like to. Um, they were rather ineffective because a lot of the times it was melee damage that we were getting and they'd just walk into okay. the melee field. Did you, um, um, did the group combo much at all? Uh, I, I'm assu- I would assume that they've comboed at random without us knowing, but we never tried to pull off a combo, which, which definitely I would try next time I played it. Okay. You know, I am that back. would definitely add so, a wait, lot What more. are we up to? Uh, class dynamics. So yeah, you said you said you couldn't really perform many of the much in the way of uh, cross possession combos. I think that's, that's what I walked in on, right? Right. But wait, what? C- cross possession combos. Oh yeah, combos? yeah, we weren't doing combos. Yeah, sorry. But um, you, what, what was it? You, you were with two elementalists, two thieves, was it? No, one one elementalist, two thieves, one warrior, one guardian. So did you find that you definitely had to do things like the guardian would take damage for a short period of time and switch out to the warrior and that kind of stuff, or like were, were people uh, like? We've actually- yeah, there were definitely me and Seeks, who was the warrior, would go around. We'd try to get the attention of the boss, but um, we did not last long. <laughs> we did not last long. Even <laughs> even if we spammed, I'm I'm I mean I timed Aegis like perfectly. I would assume, and um, after I blocked three hits and then healed twice, I died. It was wow. quite quick. Like dodging in and out extends your lifetime about five times what it normally would be if you're standing there. Right. Getting so in and out of combat in those boss fights is definitely important. You so cannot we can definitely tank. confirm there's a lack of tanking in Kill Wars right. 2. Well, definitely I would survive longer than the Elementalists or the Thieves. If and did, but did you did they heal like did did you have to did you feel like there was like a, a group effort to keep everyone alive? Like, we were we were timing um well I I don't want to say he, because there's not that much healing between people there were revives like okay get his attention while i revive this guy or i'm gonna put down my resurrection sig and (laughs) and people were saying oh god i'm down i'm gonna revive or i'm gonna spawn back and run back (laughs) and stuff like that but i it wasn't it was never like okay stand here and let me heal you because there's nothing like that oh yeah that i I agree in terms of that it's just that the main question i had regarding this point was um because the entire thing in Guild Wars 2 was that the lack of the Holy Trinity, right? And, and right. We've, we've touched on that before, but we've never actually had a full dis- discussion about it. So the Holy Trinity for uh, the two people out there who don't know what I'm talking about. Sorry if you sound derisive. But anyway, I, I don't mean to be derisive. Um, it is a heal DPS tank. That's It was established with WoW, and that, it was like the staple of most MMOs. Uh, essentially, one person can tank all the damage, i.e. take all the damage while the other people focus on their respective roles, so the healer would be trying to heal the entire party, and the DPS would try to be doing as maximum damage as possible on the boss, while the boss's uh, attention is on the tank. So, Guild Wars 2 removes all of that. It has what they call, what we've started calling a soft trinity. Um, what they call it is uh, control, uh, damage, and support. Um, what that means is stuff like condition, uh, condition spreading, damage output, taking damage, healing, and stuff. It's actually spread throughout all of the classes. Um, not to say that any of the classes actually play like one another. They actually all play quite differently. But um, in, in in a combat situation such as what noobs experiencing in these boss fights, what the ArenaNet's devs expect to happen is that everyone is dynamically switching between each of the roles for example as new pointed out when the when time was needed to take some damage to distract the boss while someone else rezzed for example the warrior would temporarily step into the role of um, support in this case taking damage so what would usually be given to a tank for example um but did you feel like so back to noob did you feel like there was a much of a call for things like support things like putting conditions on the boss like specific kinds of conditions like that kind of stuff or was right. it all about just pumping out damage like what, what did you feel um, it was like i i would say it is a mix because the funny thing is when we first were looking for a group we had the four guild people in our group yep. and we're like okay let's let's find the last person we'll we'll find the person off the street or something and um people were like, yeah, we should probably get an elementalist. 
and that's that's what everyone was thinking because <laughs> oh man, well, everyone's melee. We, we better get an elementalist. And as we played, we realized that you know while the elementalist was definitely helpful, at we could have really switched it out for any other class, even another melee class, because again, um, it's not. There's even like the elementalist, although it has the different kinds of skills, you don't really, you never really needed it. It's not right. like a requirement. It's not like, oh, if I don't have the AOE that the elementalist brings, it's over because everyone has AOE. Right. Um, but was that a case you know, of... What was, what was the other part of the question? Well, the, just to forgot. focus on that half of it. Was that a case okay. of, um, do you feel that each class becomes less important because of that? And their individual differences become less important? I, I feel like it's not about class, but more what skills you're bringing. And, right. And each, not class, but the roles you're playing in terms of when you're fighting the bosses. It's not like the Guardian does this, blah, blah, blah. It's, you're currently doing this, let's switch roles before we get killed, and stuff like that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I, I think that's, what, it, it was your impression of that positive in general? Uh, definitely, definitely. That's fantastic. It's and, not and... like... It, if you're ex- your experience in a caster maybe would in another game would be okay i'm just standing back i'm going to throw down this aoe etc cetera, etc cetera. but in this game like I, a lot of the times the caster was taking melee damage i think that was a bad thing but it, he was and he completely survived because <laughs> we, we were switching out in time like for that moment you needed him to take the damage yeah and he could. because while while the other people were reviving basically right and but right. did you find that um the the second half of the question was I, I guess I don't really remember all of it. It was a long compound question. Um, the second half I would ask you here would be uh, because every class can do a bit of everything. Um, the warriors can do a bit of attacking and, and single target and multi target, as well as a bit of group buffing. For example, you do have banners and so on and so forth. Um, did you find yourselves using some of those? Uh, well. The, did everyone essentially end up doing the same group of things, or did everyone do it in different ways? What do you mean? Oh, like so. For example, when a warrior needs to help out his allies, his two options, well, his two main options, are to damage the enemy harder and be more of a badass and take a bit more of the damage, i.e., be right. a warrior. Or a warrior can actually step back into the background and throw down a banner or put up some shouts. That oh yeah, definitely. Out. There was a lot of banners being thrown down to revive <laughs> other and. <laughs> Like, I, I kept on accidentally picking up banners because in the middle of the fight, I'm just clicking around and I, I press the wrong button and I'm picking up banners and stuff like that. So that's, um, that's one way which the warrior right. does support, right? For example, everyone was, no one was ever playing a specifically defined role. No one was tanking. Everyone was, you know, like, like your example, the warrior wasn't just standing there and taking the brunt of the damage. He was moving around. He was laying down um, chants and stuff like that. And yep. that was great. And so for you as the Guardian, did you feel that you were approaching essentially the same kind of support role in your own unique way? Or did you feel like you were doing something very similar to how the Warrior was doing it? Like, for example, as a Guardian, you could be buffing via using your... Um... Right. I, I basically focused on condition removal from allies. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. Nice. And, then so, and you did heavy... that in a unique way, different to how other classes did it? Well, I don't think other classes had condition removal. At the time? A lot of yeah. our... Yeah. Um, basically... I have a skill with my staff that takes all of the conditions from my allies and then I get a bunch of boons. And that was extremely useful because there was a lot of poison damage being thrown around. Um, that's a, that's not, actually a cool point. And, and did you find that weapon swapping played a, played a big role in yes. the dungeon? Um, the staff was, in combat terms, was for the most part useless. <laughs> I don't want to say useless because it was definitely it had a lot of snares and stuff like that it, it could stop the movement of an enemy or something that was quite useful but um in terms of damage itself it was quite useless the range was pretty low it had aoe but the damage was spread out um i was switching between the sword and shield and the staff most of the time wow, and sometimes and i'm pretty like, sure i heard the war, the thief was definitely going between double um double pistols and uh, daggers right yep yeah. so I guess from hearing all of this, putting these stuff together, seeing how like every class is doing everything in their own way. Also, we we changed our loadout for depending on the boss because Sieg's already went through it once, and he basically told us what to expect for, and then we ended up changing loadouts to, you know, be effective against each different boss because they were very different in the way we were fighting them. So, so in general, 
with all that in mind, I think the dungeon is actually turning out to be the the best example of the the breadth and depth of the Guild Wars 2 combat. Right. I, 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 can, just, I can say that. That is actually It's really a small cool. group. You're not... There's no other people running around. You're... Especially if you're in a group like we did where we had voice chat and stuff like that and we were coordinating. It was an amazing experience. That is... That's really great news. And I guess... Right. I guess let's see. Do I have any more questions here about the dungeon? Oh, yeah. So how is the balance of the dungeon what i mean by that was did you feel that um there was areas that melee was useless or did, did you feel that um it was too hard like what are your thoughts on the balance of the dungeon basically the ranger boss we fought um he was on an island like not floating but like a island it was a cliff like island and we were standing around him like a plateau and basically what like a plateau yeah and then we were standing around him in a like separated and we he basically was raining down arrows at us, and that's where melee is basically useless. <laughs> until he came and suddenly teleported to our side and then started meleeing us. Right. So there's a lot of ways you need to be able to adapt in terms of what weapons you're using and the skill set you have. Cool. And that applies to all classes. And so the second half that of the question would be, did you, did you feel it was too hard? Did, did, how would you... At first we thought so, but um, as we you know, like, played realize better. what we were doing. Yeah, as we played better, <laughs> as we got our shit together, um, it wasn't disapp- It wasn't difficult. It was enjoying, enjoyable. Like, it was that perfect difficulty. For, I was especially say, like, for a that's beginning. That's the word I would use. That sounds yep. perfect, which is kind of crazy. I, I wouldn't right. have thought that, um, of course, Ascon Castle like, is the most uh, play-tested of the dungeons. Yeah. But um, it, it sounds like they really nailed it with Dungeons and Guilds too. I'm happy to hear that. And so, so do you think, um, especially as, as you comments earlier about how you'd probably want to be higher leveled and with better geared, even though you're getting scaled down, um, be, kind of because of that, you want to be maximum you can be for the level 35 scaling. Do you feel like yep. uh, this would be a great place to hang out if you're like level 80, for example? Uh, I, f- I feel like at that point, it's a bit too easy. <laughs> I, like, I would assume... An explorable mode? Like, uh, yeah, explorable mode. Like, even if you're scaled down, you're... I would assume like your elite is pretty damn good and your gear would have some sort of benefits over level 35 gear. Yeah, like for example, I think we talked about this before, eight, level 80 gear um, has side it's benefits. Ridiculous. Yep. For, like, you're still getting stat max. Like you can't really, uh, your, the scaled gear would still give no, you, you the you, you have all of your traits and everything in at level 80, by the way. Yeah, but... It, That's yeah, the I, obvious I edge. Yeah, um, but um, just, just in terms of gear, because some people would be... Because a major concern of people is um, Guild Wars Two is supposedly a like a, a gear free not, not, not a gear free system, but um at the end there's We've defined maximums. The yeah, at the end there's like defined maximums of um, statistical advantage you can gain through spending more time getting gear. Like first and foremost, you can craft most of the gear and gain gear in the game. Perhaps not in terms of every type of look of the gear, but all the statistics of the gear you can craft. So right. you can actually get gear of the best kind inverted commas for your playstyle at the end of the game no problems um but the, the advantage you have of doing this as a level 35 versus a level 80 just in terms of gear is that level 80 gear has extra stuff so no level 35 um at level 35 with the best gear for level 35 would have around the same actual scaled statistics as level 80 would in that specific area. Mm-hmm. But level 80 gear has stuff like, for example, um, the, rule, the Rune of Melandru set can reduce all condition duration on your character by 45%. Like that's that like, stays that's, the that's, same. That's a side benefit of the max level right. gear. And you only find that in max level gear. And that's something that stays the same in the Explorer Mode Dungeon. And so you would have advantages coming back as a level 80. But the, 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 going back to the reason I was asking you the question is, um, so a lot of people are concerned, again, about the end game content for Guild Wars 2, even though it's not a, a, um, a subscription game, like a big concern for people is what am I going to do once I hit level 80? Um, and ArenaNet's answer is their response to what WoW does, which is raids to um, to make up for the difference, was uh, for ArenaNet it would be dungeons. They'd say the dungeon experience and revisiting dungeons being scaled down but getting your current level gear. For example, if you do level 35 dungeon, you're still getting level 80 gear drops um, and level 80 gear rewards from quests. So coming back and doing dungeons is their way of um, giving you, providing you end game content. What do you? What do you? What is your response to that? Do you, can you see this being viable, interesting end game content for people? 
Um, honestly, I feel like, especially the expo- well, not especially the explorer area, but there would be a lot more dungeons people would rather be in than the Ascalon Catacombs one. Really? I feel like, because not not that it would be too simple, but I, I mean, I feel like I would spend a lot of time like from level 35 and up in that dungeon. And once I'm level 80, I probably wouldn't be going back to that dungeon. Oh, right. I, because I'd wanna... it's accessible so early, you can't see right. people visiting it yeah. too much. Like, it's something you've played, you know, I don't want to say to death, but you've played a lot of it. And, you know, when there's a whole variety of different dungeons you can visit, why visit the one you've been to the most? <laughs> and... Right? With that statement, I, I, I love it. It's because it's, it's something like a backhanded compliment because it's like, I love this dungeon so much, then I'm going to play it so much, then I'm going to get sick of it. Um, but aside from that, I think that's a pretty good coverage of this dungeon. I'm, I'm really happy. I can't wait to see more dungeons in Guild Wars 2. I probably won't ever get to this before release now that we know when releases. So see you in three months, question mark? No, two, <laughs> one and a half, two and a half months for that dungeon. Um, two and a half? You mean two? It would be two and like three days, huh? <laughs> no, it'd be two and like two days. I, I'll get, I'll get there. Well, then you got a level. Yeah, then I got exactly. Then I got a level, but it's three days. It's currently thirtieth, so oh, it's, uh, I'll be of five levels, days after you, release. You do not I'll get be there. Much XP from that dungeon. That dungeon lacks like what? experience rewards. Oh, that's a good point. So the yep. so what Noob and the others were finding was for um the story mode version of the dungeon, they actually didn't get too much in the way of XP from it. Right. Like, did you even? I started at about. I nope. I started about half thirty-five, level thirty-five, and then I got to about three quarters level five. Level thirty-five. Wow. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that, that is. Like you only got not much combat XP. XP and like no events. Yeah, combat XP. I'm assuming wow. like since it's you know related to a quest in the actual game, like at the end of it, you might get XP for completing the quest, and that's what that's where the XP would come from. Right. Gotcha. But so yeah. in most cases, you'd say this isn't a place to grind. But then no, the other side of it would be, fun. would it be a place for gear? It, it sounds like you didn't get too much good gear from it uh, either. I, Explorable apparently has the better gear. The story, because again, this is a story dungeon. It's not focused on the gear, but more like just progressing through the dungeon. The Explorable area is where the gear collection is at. Cool. Well, then if it's, I mean, if it's not for, you know, experience gain and it's not really for gear... Aside from people who just really care about the story of Guild Wars 2, like, what's the reason? It is the first dungeon. Right, but, I mean, why do it? I feel like What is the motivation? um, It's like the baby's first dungeon, like I said earlier. It's 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 obviously the first time will be the story mode. It's part of your personal story, story. that too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so it's required to go go through it. Yeah, so it's an introduction to the dungeon thing, and I, I guess as a story kind of thing, being a story mode of the dungeon, that it's not... It's not too bad. It, there's it's actually too quite a big like thing that goes on. Like the final boss fight is like a big story thing. Well, I would right. think so, it was a big story. So you thing. can't you can't actually progress your personal story without doing it. I would assume so. Probably not. That's bad. I don't know, well, man. That sounds. Good oh no, to this me. is like late in your well, no, personal story. Like what I'm thinking of, I'm thinking like three years from now. That's bad. <laughs> like it's fine now while everyone is still going through that content, right. but once more content has come out and, and people have made. Tons of alts or whatever. Like I'm thinking of the new player that comes in a year, two years, you know, maybe even three years down the line. Like that's without a guild, that, that, without that, people to come like in. And do that, the with yeah, them. that roadblock there seems real akin to and that's the when they'll add group heroes. quest roadblock of, <laughs> um, you know, the the group quests and wow, like that's why they got rid of that stuff was because you can't count on that player base of there being enough of a player player base at the same time lo- a long ways down the road. Right, right. So, well, that's that's, that's uh, a con- I. I like WoW and this game, I think that's a problem that they don't have to fix for a while. For, for right. as you said, two to three years. Yeah, it's, it's a problem they don't have to fix for a while, but I feel like it's a problem that... You, you add henchmen I actually think heroes. the opposite. I think it's, like, it's a great thing to have now, as this first year, to get people into a dungeon and to f- feel what that's like uh, for the first time through, just to see if they like it, for example. But it's something that's good but for as a this first year of early adoptions. Well, but at the same time, like, would you would you then say that it should be required through a personal story that you go through and do a world v world event? I know, I kind of would. No, <laughs> like it's, it's it's the same idea. Like, it's just it's 
if people just don't like dungeons, then why force them to I, do I it? I kind of would. Because I, I, I think it's, it's not... good to expose people, and I'm fine with forcing them, because again, it's only what... Like, Incentivizing is one this thing, is, but forcing is, is completely different. Um, this is only a portion of the full dungeon. It's the explorer area as a full dungeon. This is only a short portion of it. It only takes an hour. It is not a dungeon. I would not consider it. Actually, the explorable area is what's more of the dungeon. The story mode is just, you know, getting you into that kind of game mode. Well, right, but unless, unless you can unless you can solo your way through there, you I just cannot. don't see... Oh, you cannot? I, no, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I just don't see, like, forcing players that, you know, to, are wanting to progress their character and progress their personal story to have to go and do that. No, that's, I mean, that's when they'll add henchmen and heroes. No, they are not. I'm talking even about even at launch. Even at launch. Um, he's, he's, even at launch, like you're forcing people to go through and do content that they may or may not want to do. You're forcing you know, very casual players to commit to an hour plus time in order to progress their personal story, which they may or may not have. Some people play these games 20, 30, 45 minutes at a time. I mean, it's just that's a lot to ask of, of a player just to continue the, their progress through the game. I think it's a good move. I think it's a good uh, move. Even, even though there is that issue. I don't mind it personally. I don't mind it personally. I'm, right. Like I said, I'm just thinking of an hour there are players where it will be a problem. Task. Yeah, but uh, if it's, it's like not, three hours long, and, like a I, bow range. Yeah, the for thing example, is, some people don't be have an hour. Or, and they want to yeah, exactly. play the game. Like there, yeah, are, there are some people that play these games that MMO, play them for 20, though. 30 minutes at like, a time. Yeah, it's an MMO. Because they're doing it's some people coming into an MMO. There are hundreds of thousands of people playing. What percentage of those people won't have an hour to spend in a dungeon? I don't believe it's enough to limit. Because I think there's significant advantages to forcing people to do this content, for example. Because I do want people to be exposed to multiple sides of the game, and the developers probably feel the same way. And I think there's, it's easy for them to say, and I, I believe it's fully supportive for them to say, that the vast, the significant and vast majority would be, it wouldn't be too roadblocked by this Tarkin, dungeon being forced. I, w- I wouldn't even compare this mission to a dungeon, but more to a mission in Guild Wars, the original Guild Wars. The the thing I would say though, Cynic, when you're saying like you you would like to see people exposed to this type of content and everything, I I understand that, and I, I understand wanting to expose players to things like boss mechanics and you know things like standing out, getting out of fire and positioning in boss fights, things like that. But games have done that in a way where it is done through your basic quests and not force you to do dungeons. Even WoW does that now to this day. Like there are there are personal there are there are, there are solo quests that you do. They introduce you to boss mechanics. Yeah, and I guess the, the basic um, two sides of the philosophy is incentivized versus forced. And I can see why slapping forced on there is a definite detractor. Um, but coming from the side of things where I believe that a lot of people just don't give this stuff a try, I think there's, there's a significant amount of research out there that says that a lot of people just don't see most of these games. Um, Actually, Cynic, I'll, I'll clarify this a bit better for people who've played the original Guild Wars. Is this the mission itself was, or like the the story mode is a mission in the original Guild Wars, while the explorable mode is like an actual dungeon you would fight in, in let's say, Eye of the North. That's exactly what it was. It's not something that you are investing like two hours and putting in, you know, like hardcore effort into it. It's something that it's like a one hour thing you go in, and right? You but learn again, mechanics. You're- you're still, regardless of, of the title that you associate it to, you're still requiring people to invest an hour plus. And I say an hour plus because not all groups will be on Mumble or Vent with each other and have the coordination that you guys necessarily had. And You know, you may end up having to get five random people in there doing it, and it may take you more than an hour to do so. So an hour plus investment just to progress yourself through the game. But I feel forced. like once you're level 30, an hour plus investment is something you've probably already given into the game. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it all depends. Some people play the game differently than others. There, there are people like my, my brother playing Star Wars. He still he has invested quite a bit of time into the game, but he still hasn't hit max level yet. But he doesn't play a, a lot at a time. He doesn't have the time to. He has three kids. He has work. He has school. I think the point I mean, he that, doesn't um, have the time to invest in that Nuv stuff. Nuvram is trying to raise though is uh, all of the story progression in the original Guild Wars was based on this model. Um, right. All of the story mode, was right? Based but the thing on is, though, you have to remember to one hour and a half hour. Uh, Guild Wars 1 was not a proper MMO. No. This is a proper MMO. And it, and it's so the, the, being the, exposed to a larger audience, I agree, but it's also being exposed to much of the same audience. Um, in, in our case, I'm pretty sure anyone who played the first Guild Wars wouldn't find this dungeon particularly out of the normal, let alone uh, 
too much. Probably not. No. But the, the thing is, though, is that you can't use that as the only metric for for these decisions because right. this game is going to reach quite a few more people than but just everybody. How many hours have you put into the game already once you've hit level thirty? Well, Duin's or, arguing or for even the massive. That, that all depends. Yeah, that, that all depends. He's, he's like, not saying that he won't yeah, do this. He's yeah, the amount of hours that I, know, I spend, I the, the amount of hours that I would spend going from one to thirty are completely different than the amount of hours my brother would spend. Right, right. How how like a person who takes who doesn't put in that much time at a time and you know tries to progress to level 30 how long do you think it would take them on average cumulative hours probably yeah. a lot longer than me right but we're not talking about cumulative hours we're talking but about then they've these, probably the block of time they have to do that roadblock where they've realized oh man i probably need to invest more than 30 minutes into this game no because again going time. back it's to you know, using my brother as an example he's still hours. he's still playing star wars he's still enjoying it he doesn't have the, the time that i had i i was max level before he hit level 20 he doesn't have the time Wait, to invest the same amount of uh, same chunks of time that i did of the um of a far a forced dungeon in, no yeah, they did it wasn't that event did, did it not have Jeff any missions the um the the I forgot what they call it but the uh there's like this kind of dungeon in star wars where it's like a flashpoint i think they called it those aren't required at all i you think the first one was required game. wasn't it i think jeff no, said it's not about required that. okay it, it is absolutely not required. I, I've played through multiple characters in that game. Right. It is, it's not required. It's very easy to do, and you can actually you can duo it, but it's not required at all. Okay. Right, but it's not required to the personal story, is it? No. Every every Flashpoint has its own separate story, separate from... No, 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 I mean Guild Wars 2. No, oh, wait, did, what about it? you said that this was required as part of your personal story, wasn't it? Per, like, but it's not required to do the personal story. Yeah. Okay, that's what that's what you were saying, is you, right. you were saying that it was required in order to progress your personal story. Right, but it's not... You know, it's you can put this back until like you can find the oh, time. Oh, what it. Noob is saying is it's not required to always be doing your personal story. Right. So he's saying that for the person who has doesn't have an hour today but may have one on Saturday, he can do other stuff while not progressing his personal story. Um, and I'd argue that's probably the better content in Guild Wars Two, the non-personal story stuff, um, instead of just doing this dungeon when he doesn't have the time because there is so much on offer. I, I suppose that's an option, but I, I don't feel like that's a very good excuse for this existing. I love the idea of this. <laughs> I mean, like, 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 like just I, have... I personally won't have a problem getting through it because, again, like, I, I do have the time. And I think to most people that. won't. That's the but thing. I think... Like, you're arguing for a very small subset. But, but it's also the second. But it's still a subset that um... exists. It's still a subset that has spent that spent the same sixty dollars that I have. I, I I don't have too much. Of a There's the second side to the argument that this dungeon does require you to group up with others. As right. far as we've seen from the and personal everything story, else doesn't, right? you, haven't, you haven't required to party up at all. That, I think, is a bigger issue than the person who can't spend an hour. Um, I think it's a, it's a pretty large issue that an awesome side of Guild Wars 2 is the fact that you can get through almost everything, in inverted commas, on your own. As in, you'd, you'd be yeah. joining a team of people ro- roving the world, you'd, you'd be uh, dynamically grouping and ungrouping from people throughout the entire story, and forcing people to actually have a group of five people together in one spot at one time, able to do this dungeon, extends that hour of play that Durin's talking about to significantly more because it includes finding that group of people in the first place. Um, I think it's fair to say that if the dungeon's only an hour long, then I don't mind being, being forced on people. But for that person for who doesn't have a guild um, or doesn't have... Or at the time he's logging on, there's just not that many people playing on his server on that dungeon in that area, um, him, it wouldn't be an hour expenditure lost. It would be a potential f- three to four hours trying to get people ready yeah. to get into this dungeon. Well, and that, exactly, and that goes back to what I was originally saying. Like That's why it worries me about like specifically the new player a year, two years, three years down the road. Mm. I don't know like, why... They're, they're going to hit that roadblock. It's so simple. Heroes and henchmen. Yeah, that, but well, you're, they're, you're they're making again, again, noob. You're making assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. You're making assumptions of things that don't exist right now. Yeah, and and no, but that I feel like that exists. would be a system that works for. But, and this is the problem that exists now. Like we are in an awesome guild. That you should join it. Lincoln, uh, to Lincoln and, Force, and and not even. But yeah, and, and not even a year from now. Like even you know three months, six months from now. Like when Miss of Pandaria launches, the, the the population is going to drop. It's going to happen. Yeah. And so, what if somebody starts a new character? Then then that that hour suddenly becomes 
two hours because they have to spend an hour trying to get a group together. Yeah. Exactly. And what if what if they can what if they can only play during the middle of weekdays because that's when they have the time to play and that's when the population is at its lowest. And where beyond they can't that, play prime time on Friday nights. Exactly. And 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 closer to what Tarkin was alluding to, it kind of undermines some of the best parts of playing Guild Wars Two, the fact that you can't play this alone like how you want to play if you like if you don't like grouping with people don't like having that m- mumble environment i think that's a bit too much for you you can't really do this easily without yeah i mean that. if they want yeah if they wanted to do like if they wanted to have some kind of a dynamic event that was tied to your personal story then i would have no problems with that because that does scale to the number of players in the area and there's a way to do that if you're the only one there like th- there's ways that can be done right but to force you to actually find four other people and group with them and, and put that time commitment in to, to do this in order to progress your personal story, that's where it goes too far. Okay, so I'm going to flip my script, not because of the people who don't have an hour to, think, to play because I don't care about them. Well, I don't not care about them, but there's so few of you that fuck you guys. But it, this, this side of things... <laughs> wow, that's nice. This, this side of things where it does kind of fuck over the people, like me, myself. Like I don't always want to be rolling with other people. Um and a lot of people out there, even our, our guild, don't want to be doing everything with other players and don't want to be forced into that context. That is the reason why I'm switching to Durant's side. This is stupid. It shouldn't be part of the personal story. Fuck you guys. Fuck you, internet. No, I, <laughs> I think an important point here is that we can't, I'm pretty sure we can't actually confirm that this is part of your personal, everyone's personal story. Like, are you absolutely true. sure? Like, I'm pretty sure Well, because I'm you know, 100% on this one. Um, story-wise, it does very much seem like something that would fit into your personal story because it's, right. it's a story mode, like for a reason. Right. What the and hell? It is like? Ridlock finding air and it is a dungeon. Well, I don't believe it. That was the noise of just Ridlock because, finding just because air. it's a story mode doesn't mean necessarily that it's part of your personal story. Like going back to to Star Wars, like the flashpoints each had their own individual story that played out from beginning to end, but they in no way affected or were affected by your um your personal story as you were playing. Right, exactly. I can be completely retarded. Because what right. I was thinking was yeah. that that's it actually very much story. a possibility. That's just the story <laughs> of Guild Wars too, in general. Right. Right. Yeah. So we will say that uh, TBD in that one, I, if it is forced as part of your personal story, I'm with uh, Tarkin Durin and maybe Noob. I'm not sure what side you're on at the moment. In saying that Hero's henchman. Be. Hero's henchman. Hero's henchman. Hero's <laughs> henchman should be there and available if uh, this... I would actually fully support that as an option. Like, if they put Heroes and Henchmen just for around the dungeons, I'd, I'd be happy right. with that. Because then people can do it, play the way they want. Like, you could easily fit this into the story, because the explorable mode has, like, the Durman Priory people in it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we have mercenaries from the Durman Priory. Exactly. And they, they want, want people you. to play on their own if they want to. Which right. is a significant... Like, before, the, my major thing against it was, hey, I'm fine with them forcing people into doing this dungeon, because, fuck it, barely anyone, or... A very small portions of the community have the problem of not being able to do that, not be able to spare the time. But on the other hand of things, a significant proportion of this community won't be grouping up with people, won't be uh, in a position where they have friends to tap into, a guild to tap into, and be able to do these dungeons anytime they want to, when they want to. Um, right. We're talking about 0.5% versus like 30 to 40% here and 40% of people are having an issue where they can't do a dungeon right now when the, the only time they have to spare because they can't group up and they're forced to be in group up that's a problem I have something against. oh crap I'm, I'm reading something on the Guild Wars wiki and it's like in explorable versions the Durman Priory is attempting to solve the issue of the unknown darkness and the players must choose one of three methods to yeah, go about this that's the thing each yeah. method as it's right and um, what I first encountered was in that explorable area is the first time I found like voting for a decision Oh, they have that. Hmm. We, we've seen that. We've seen that. Right. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's in, really in cool. Other I mean, no, going, going back to what you were saying earlier, Cynic, though, like, like you can say fuck <laughs> you to the the the, the point three percent people yeah. uh, who who maybe that would affect. But the thing is, Arena Net can't. Well, Arena Net shouldn't. I guess. Th- yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Like they they, well, I'm fine they, if they need did. to have. I'm fine if they did, <laughs> but they shouldn't. I guess. Yeah, they need they need to have something else in there for them if that ends up being the case. So you can like, put an or maybe cap. leaving like an opt out of the the story if that was the case. Yeah, let me skip something like that. But um, yeah, well, you put an end cap on that discussion. I, I think you missed it during, but we actually had a significant section there of us talking about the builds and stuff of um, and how we felt the build dynamics and team dynamics worked in the dungeon. So maybe you can go back and listen. But um, yeah. Aside from that, we're gonna put an end on that. Um. Do we want, we are at two hours or so, aren't we? I, I, we might as well top it off for three. 
Yeah, uh, may as well. Uh, we're just going to put an end cap. Uh, we're not going to be talking about the stress test or beta weekend events again. Uh, World vs. World is sadly falling by the wayside again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, God yeah. Damn oh, yeah. it. Bad but hey, it's, it's not my fault. Shin Boy couldn't make it today and Arena announced the release date. What can I do? What can I do? You um, can talk about an event that happened at the end of this certain beta. Yes. So what we'll do we'll here that. is... Um, just to cap everything off, we're going to talk about the beta ending event, which we held off uh, last week because New Barama haven't experienced yet. They repeated it for the stress test. Um, we're talking about at the very end of the betas, uh, Rena usually throws a, a shindig in one of the areas in PvE that everyone can show up to and be a part of. It's a special air event that doesn't really happen as part of the game. And in this case, I think it was pretty freaking awesome. So, Noob... Actually, I'll, I'll probably tell my... Yeah, you start with it. You start uh, with it. Yeah, because we did it into beta, and uh, I can probably start with that. So, what Were you guys we... with all together? It was me, Tarkin, and Subjugation. Um, all right. During, so were you sucks. there during the finale? Last uh, stress test? No. Yes, beta. Or the, or the beta event. Uh, I was there for the beta one. The stress okay. test one, I came back oh. at the very, very end of okay. it. Right. They're the same, basically, yeah. 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 Um, so what happened was uh, we, we were... In PvE, just uh, doing whatever the fuck. I think it was in the human starting area. And um, eventually got to the point where there was like, announcements across the entire world and on the forums and a couple of other things that say... Um, I think it was the the Char starting area, if it was Ashford yeah. Plains, whatever it was. Yep, Plains of Ashford. Like yeah, something like that. Plains of Ashford. Um, there's an event going to happen in Plains of Ashford at X time, one hour before the beat event ends. And so we're like, okay, let's, let's go over there. So we meet up on the Plains of Ashford. And uh, we hang out at the area which is used to be the Great Northern Wall in the first Guild Wars. And it looks really cool. Like There's different lighting effects there. It's awesome. Check that area out. But we're hanging there. And after a while, we're standing around going, why is, why is the event not starting? What's happening here? And eventually, this big purple crystal kind of materializes on the map. And on the side of the map, a new quest, like a new dynamic event begins, which is like um, the corruption level of the Plains of Ashford. And we're like, what, what What does that mean? At that point, we have no idea of any of this. So we're like, hey, it's telling us to go kill this crystal, so let's go over there and kill this crystal. So we go over, we start fighting this crystal, and then these monsters start appearing. Um, and at that point, we didn't know what, if there was anything special about them. I still can't confirm if there's anything special about the first monsters that show up and the beta event starts. Um, but they're, they're relatively tough. They protect the crystal, and, and they um, eventually got some kills on our side. Um, but everything wasn't too terrible. We raised a couple of us, uh, the guys who were downed but not defeated. And the guys who were defeated kind of disappeared. And we're like, whatever. That, that, that's not going to, it doesn't mean anything. Um, so we move around and we start doing a couple of these uh, um, around the map. And they start happening at all the waypoints. Um, so you couldn't waypoint around the map. You kind of had to charge around the map. And in our case, it was with a big Zerg. And um, if, slowly and surely, like we didn't really notice. But the herd started to thin, and the enemies around these crystals started getting like more numerous and tougher. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're there, and we're like, oh, that's pretty cool. And eventually, the Zerg got a bit boring, as Zergs always do. We, we, we branch off on our own. So it's just me, Tarkin, and Sobs assaulting these crystals on our own. So we're there at a crystal, and this entire time, we're like, hey, these enemies are getting harder. That's, that's weird. It's kind of cool that they're doing this. It's, it's, it's interesting that they're doing some kind of cool event scaling here. And we're finding, we, we, just us, so there's no distractions, no big Zerg and no big like particle effects going on to distract us. And we start noticing that um, when insulting Crystal alone, not only is it much, difficult, much more difficult because there's only a couple of us, but also these enemies didn't move like AI. And we were kind no, of sat there going, not. and I was like, no, that's, that's bullshit. They, they also had names. Yeah, they also had well, we didn't names. notice that yet. We didn't notice that yet. No, oh, yeah, okay. We did not yes. notice that yet. We did notice, but we're like, oh, it's just Anet being assholes. It's like, oh, they've renamed some Oh, yeah, we, we thought it was like, yeah, or, or, or we thought that um, like people from Anet were playing some of the enemies, right? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and at, this, at this time, we're like, oh, whatever. It's, it can't be, we just kill them. We weren't doing too badly. They're just fighting and like then, the same as monsters, so like. Whatever. Exactly. It was, it was interesting because it seemed like they were some of them were playing a role really well. Like they just fought like monsters did. They just charge up, beat on you, and then die. And if you then eventually ran away, they just stay around the crystal. Yeah, they stay around the crystal. But then eventually we started seeing some dodging, and then some saying like proper kiting and all this stuff that monsters just don't. 
do in Guild Wars. And we were like, wait, these are actually players, not just the arena net guys, but there's more and more of these monsters, which means that there's more and more players joining the enemy side. Then we look at the bar as part of the event at the side, and the corruption level of the Plains of Ashford was increasing. And then we were like, what happened to those guys who were downed? Uh, sorry, defeated, but not downed. And then I died. <laughs> and then I joined the enemy. <laughs> and then the game changed. Um, yeah, it was. It, it's great. So essentially what it was is a giant zombie affair where... If a player was defeated, they all the um, waypoints were actually contested because when you chose a waypoint to respawn at because you're defeated, you respawn, but not human anymore, not your class anymore. You are what are something branded? else. You are branded. You you, you have different skills. You fr- frequently you're not human anymore. There's something else. There's something else. You, you freaking like not even like some of the, the character models weren't even human character models they were like big hawking monsters and stuff and you get to play like yeah. these really cool interesting things and the best part was at least for us until like noobs version of this story was after we found this out it sh- shit just got really real because the game changed and at that point we didn't know about something we'll talk about later so we really didn't want to die like You'd rather run from an, an engagement if it got too heated because you don't want to die and turn to the, into a zombie. It's a zombie apocalypse thing repeated in Guild Wars, essentially. So I was at the point where I just died and I didn't want to be a zombie no more. So I found these guys because they're still my team or my party so that I could still see them on the map. And it got to this situation where it was like me going up to them going, kill me. And them going, no, what? They're being attacked by other branded people. And I was like, okay, I can't really help them. I can't attack these branded people. And then they um, aggroed these nearby wildlife. So I was like this nice branded, walking like this nice zombie, essentially, <laughs> killing the wildlife who are attacking my friends, but not attacking my friends. And eventually they take out the rest of the bandit and I'd taken out all the wildlife. And I just, it's got this like really touching inverted commas moment with me just standing there going, I won't attack you. Just kill me to see if I can turn human again. Then they killed me. And <laughs> it was I a couldn't. mercy kill. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mercy kill and I couldn't. And, I, and then I got re, I respawned as Brandon and then I hunted them down. Um, right. But it was, it was a really great instance and a really cool way of ending off uh, the Beta Weekend event because for us it was like, completely surprised we had no idea what was happening and only at this like, last couple of moments did we figure out what would what was happening and then she got real so it was really cool but i heard that your version of this event was a little bit different so a um, little bit Rama. different yes so um by the time the event started uh we we just got out of the uh Ascalon catacomb story mode so we just got out and we're like okay this is this is the ending event what's going on and then so there's this big horde of people corruption level was relatively low and basically there was fighting involved and all of these corrupted were fighting the um, humans and the humans basically like cynic said were just running around in a blob destroying waypoints and we're like okay this is this is kind of easy and then um we're like okay let's let's go check out the explorer area so we went to the explorer area uh, wiped a bunch of times raged and then came out and it turns out nearly all of the area was completely branded so only like like you look in the chat the crazy thing is you look in the chat and then it's all just branded people typing it's like three here three humans spotted by the waypoint by the oh, lake that's cool. and it was literally <laughs> crazy i'm like oh my god this place is taken over and we were fighting we were completely surrounded and one of us died and i'm like oh crap i'm just gonna go back to the dungeon and it turns out if you walk in the dungeon you get turned back into a human so that's actually not the only way. Oh, really? out also, if you log out of the game and back in, wow. turn back oh, in. Wow. So basically, what we did was um, we'd go in the dungeon and then we'd come out, we'd kill all of the infected or the branded, destroy the waypoint, and then we started saying, "Oh God, we the humans are taking over," and they're like, "What are you talking about?" And then we they'd come back and destroy us, and then we'd walk back in and then come out, and then destroy them, and then we were literally, it was a literal guerrilla war, and people were like, are you serious? I killed that guy at least three times, and I'm like, no, you didn't, and then it, it, it turned out, it, it became like a complete verbal fight, people are like, are you, what, are, these guys are trying to ruin, the point of the game is for everyone to become branded, 
And then people are like, no, the point of the game is to destroy all the branded. And then people were getting angry, and I and then I died, and then I walked back <laughs> in, I became a human, killed more branded, and then I died, and then I became more human. And it was a cycle of hate and people getting mad at the three of us for going back in and killing everything. And um, wow, it was fun. It was hilarious. Well, noob, it, it was if hilarious. it makes you feel any better, um, the other major issue with the event that happened both times actually um, is. And, and maybe this is because the whole area needs to be 100% corrupted for it to happen. Right. But um, when the branded kind of started to take over, uh, this was at least the case uh, for sure on the uh, the first time it happened. I, I believe it happened the second time as well. Was then your goal is to kill these uh, the, the, the different um, humans like, he, he, heroes representing oh, right. the, the live side. Yeah, Ridlock and the problem went off was on his own. they were all they were all invincible. You really? Hit them. Oh, really? Okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the whole event was broken because you couldn't actually complete it because they were all invincible. <laughs> yeah. So after all that work, then everyone just kind of sat there beating on him and dying over and over again because you couldn't actually get a blow in. I, I think the so, coolest thing on that event was the discovery of the event, um, but also everyone got to see the Shatterer for the first time. Um, I, I actually remember. missed it. Both yeah, I missed times. the Shatterer. Yeah. Oh, he was flying. Okay, well, you saw screen caps of him um, in the the screen cap thread on the guy jump on forums but he's this enormous really cool one. looking dragon the screen shakes when he flies past it's it was really cool like you see right. him in like the, the press events and that kind of stuff footage of youtube but nothing really compares to like walking across the sun countryside and then seeing this like giant crystal and like purple energy dragon flying over you and like roaring <laughs> and shit it was See, so that, cool. that seems kind of boring because we were raging full out guerrilla warfare we'd <laughs> we'd get out of the dungeon and then sometimes we wouldn't even want to die we'd run right back in as we were losing and then nice. we'd come out like a couple minutes later we'd destroy their waypoint so they can't spawn there any longer and then we'd hold them off, and it, when then we got pushed back, we just walked back in the dungeon. It's not right. like they could follow us into our own. I'm happy that everyone had fun at least. But it's interesting right. to see. Now, the well, the people that that we fought were not having much fun. They were like, <laughs> they were real. They were quite pissed. They were verbally uh, abusing, they were verbally you. abusing me. Aww. Yeah, and, and I called them some ma- bad things that I regret. <laughs> but hey, tough shit. If you, that's what happens when you occupy humanity. Well, I guess that's even not even a human zone, but whatever. <laughs> In we general, I'm, yeah, I, I can't yeah. wait for the next. I hope the next one is good. The yeah. Next beauty event. If we filmed that, we could have made that as the remake for that that eighties movie, Red Dawn. That could have been the Red Dawn remake. <laughs> anyway, and with that, that wonderful quip by Nubarama and terrible <laughs> weapons, and just impossible. Like it would be stupid. Red anyway, Dawn, what we're gonna end out the show. Uh, <sighs> thanks for we we, actually t- we went far and wide with this. We went to the release announcements, the beta speculation, then some stuff on the stress test, dungeon actual theories of dungeon balance and stuff. To finally, the um, happy go lucky beta ending event. So it would be an interesting show, a pretty good show actually. Aside from the fact that like half of us weren't here for some bits of it, but um. Yeah, no, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll just go into plugs. I'm self Cynic. You can join us uh, or you can email me at uh, thelinkingcast at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at thelinkingcast. We also post on the Giant Bone forums every week with the show notes and uh, the Guild Wars 2 Guru forums. So you can post there if you want any feedback or email me or Twitter me at those addresses. So Duran, do you have anything to plug? Uh, no, not really. Just, you know, same old Twitch channel still. I'm going to finish Dead Space, I swear it. <laughs> Yeah, so to, to do a better plug of his channel than Duran is, Duran is doing an <laughs> awesome uh, Twitch TV content stuff. Uh, he's been playing through games. Uh, I think he's done Dungeon of Grimrock so far, so far, and also a significant portion of Dead Space 2. Um, and he plays them on his Twitch TV channel, so you can check him out on Duran. Uh, sorry, Twitch TV forward slash Duran, so D-O-U-R-A-N. Um, I'm, you can maybe be able to see me on there sometimes. There's also people from his old Warcraft uh, guild. We'll be joining him as uh, commentators on his videos. It's pretty fun. We tend to get together, uh, play for a significant portion, like four hours at a time. Um, so you don't have to watch all four hours at once, obviously. But if you, if you want to catch it out, you can sit down for some significant content and some pretty awesome games. Um, if you can watch chatters there. I think you also do some Diablo 3 content and as well as some Batman content on there, right? Uh, yeah, some other things. When, when, like when I'm able to stream, but not necessarily maybe for the length of time that I would like for the game that I'm playing. I'll sometimes you know hop in there with the Diablo or whatever. Um, but I think I'm, I'm thinking after uh, uh, Dead Space 2 is done, instead of hitting the Steam roulette thing, 
I recently picked up Ellie, Ellie Noir for five bucks on Steam. It is so, so I good. Go that next. It is so I've played good. Through, I've, I've played through some of it, but I'm totally okay with starting over again because it's been so long. Yeah. I, I completely so. got at that point where I'm like, I bought this game and I installed it with 13 gigabytes. And I'm like, uh, this is fun, I guess. <laughs> Right. I, I just wanted to kill everyone. I had a I great couldn't. thing like, with this Eleanor, game does not let you kill anyone. Where my um, no, it's, it is not GTA. That's for sure. Yeah, no. But the best thing by Eleanor was I did it with my friends. In that, um, we sat down. I put the disc in my PS3 because I play on PS3 on the TV, and like three of my friends were sitting around me, and we get into those interrogation sequences, and we'd all be like, "Hey, was." Was he telling the truth there? With the whole like discussion of like, no, he he like twitched his eyes when he when he said this statement. Hey, we, yeah, we play. Yeah. That was like the best. And thing. So I think I think that's why this this will be real fun for the next game. <laughs> well, I hope it does. Like, there's a bit of problem too. with the um the twitch lag, but aside from that, if you, yeah. if you can get that kind of discussion going, it could be a really great stream. But, and Noir, it's yeah. a game, good game, play on whatever platform you want. But uh, it's worth it, at least for the first twenty or so hours. Then it kind of falls off a cliff. Anyway. <laughs> five dollars on Steam. Go for it. Uh, Tarkin, well, no, it's not. It's, it's not five dollars on Steam anymore. It was the mid uh, midweek oh, madness sale, so it's already so over. What's it normally? Fifteen. Uh, twenty. Twenty. Okay. Well, still, still worth it at twenty bucks. It, yeah, absolutely. See, it's good. At least twelve hours. Well, Dawn of War's on sale now. Dawn of War two or the entire franchise. Cool. And Tarkin, do you have anything to plug? Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen you. Uh, you've pimped up your giant bomb. User profile a little bit. You wanna, a little bit. He's Tarkin on Giant Bomb. You want to check him out? Maybe uh, put some posts on his wall. Give him some more achievements. He's being caught by the Giant Bomb achievement fad. It's kind of sad. <laughs> I've been I've been in Giant Bomb for like four or five since it started, and I'm only level ten on Giant Bomb because I'm just not an achievement kind of person. And Tarkin's already level nine after like one what, one and a half days of trying, <laughs> something like that. About two three days of trying. Yeah. <sighs> I'm falling behind. I, no, I'm not going to get into it. You're not going to. You're not going to take me, giant bomb. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. Um, I'm level 13, cynic. I'm level 16. Nubarama, do you have anything to plug? Um, uh, my new show, <laughs> Cooking in Guild Wars 2, is now on the Food Network. Dude, um, we should you totally do that. that. We should totally do that. Wednesdays at 9 p.m. E- Eastern time. That should be a thing on we do. The Food Network. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Oh, I would definitely. Well, it's already. I already signed a contract. And basically, <laughs> I, I cook delicious stuff. Um, tickets are being sold in for both real currency and Guild Wars currency. Just uh, hit me up a message, and I'll and I'll take your money and give you a ticket to the show. But we should seriously do that. <laughs> 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 like after, oh yeah, so, so just to round things out. Um, so this is well, episode ten of the Lincoln Cast. We finally hit double digits, and the game's being announced. My original plan for this podcast has been to pretty much stop after a week after the game's release because this is more of a, a thing to tide me over till the game because I wanted something to keep me into it, keep me in Guild Wars 2, uh, spread some messages to the guild and stuff because I, I do run this for the Jai Bomb uh, guild. E- even though like, if you're not in the guild, I, I welcome your presence and I'm kind of surprised that you like listening to us every week. But uh, aside yeah, from that... To join the guild. Enjoy the guild. Buy <laughs> tickets for my show. <laughs> um, but aside from that, yeah, it was, it was never really my intention to keep doing this past the game coming out so i, I this could be the night the the final stretch of the lincoln cast it's going to be a fun ride towards the end the finish line there um well we're only like halfway there yeah but it's kind of crazy because it feels like i've been doing this forever and i feel like the next month or so because i kind of because there's only around nine episodes to go i kind of already know what i want to do with those nine episodes i'm probably going to do a um like a, a thing you should like a, a discussion topic every week of um our like a thing about Guild Wars 2 that you should be excited about, or if you're new to the whole Guild Wars 2 thing, uh, informing you about that topic. That's kind of my idea for like the discussion for the next couple of weeks. Um, if there's not any incredible news, which I don't think so. I assume now that they've released a, a release date, there's not going to be too much in the way of like exciting new news. So um, we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll see. If you guys want us to keep doing it after the game comes out, we'll see when it comes to closer to then. What I would be interested in doing is possibly... We only like need a- one person to tell us that, because... It, it gives us great pleasure to think one person is listening to this yeah, podcast. Right exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, if you've listened this to the end, let's let's do the secret quote thing because this is a three hour long podcast. I want to know. Uh, it's going well, to be turkey, turkey, turkey again. I like that tradition. Turkey, turkey, turkey. Yeah, just, just post turkey, turkey, turkey. 
Um, Why not if, if send me this far. on PayPal ten dollars? <laughs> <laughs> listen to the end, and then, but, um, and then we'll find out how like, many ten dollars I get. Uh, what's the face? Guildcast is doing a PvP only po- po- version of their podcast. So uh, it's second Guild Wars two podcast every week, which I think is an awesome idea, and I'm totally game for that. I love. Why don't you go email them? Why don't you marry the Guildcast if you love it so much, huh, Cynic? <laughs> I love the fact that they're doing a PvP podcast. So I, if if we were going to do stuff after the game releases, it would be just stuff like um, specials like this one for when an event happens. So something like a big patch comes out, we'll, we'll get out here and discuss the changes and stuff. Um, I, I'll definitely consider still doing that kind of stuff when the game comes out and maybe a weekly PvP podcast about World vs. World. Um, what about a PvE podcast? Or that too. Or it could, it could be a podcast. It could be a People podcast. Just sit about, here talking about it would just be more Linky Cat. I don't know. We'll see when the game comes out. But I'm more Linky Cat. In, um, just random shit mixed in, in, with in a PvP podcast. If anyone out there is into the whole PvP thing, I know Dark Road spam is. Uh, once he gets his new computer together, hopefully Robbie Mac, though it's hard to nail him down to a weekly schedule. Durin, I know you're into PvP, so I might get you into that. But we'll see. Um, until then, uh, until next week, we we'll still have, what, nine weeks to go, so you'll be catching us there. Thank you for listening and goodbye. Sayonara. Goodbye.